Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and uh, this episode is brought to you by Steve Harvey's Elevate You. Okay? I got to tell you about Elevate You, man. It's something that's been uh, keeping us feeling fresh, healthy, and energized lately. Uh, Elevate You is Vitality Daily Greens, okay, co-founded by the good brother Steve Harvey and formulated by Harvard scientists. This game-changing formula boosts your bodies. I cannot pronounce this word. Mitochondrial production. Providing you with sustained energy throughout the day. No more relying on coffee or unhealthy energy drinks to get you going. It's packed with over 30 superfoods, vitamins, and minerals to feel energized, focused, and ready to tackle your day. All right? I know how hard it is to stay on top of your health and nutrition game. Sometimes it feels like there just aren't enough hours in the day to get everything done. But with Elevate You, you don't have to worry about that anymore. This stuff is packed with all the nutrients and vitamins you need to keep your body running like a well-oiled machine. And the best part... It's super easy to use. Just mix a scoop into your water or juice and you're good to go. And it comes in three delicious flavors, chocolate, tart cherry, and original greens. And check this out. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your full purchase. Take control of your health today and experience more daily energy with Elevate You. Vitality Daily Greens. Go to ElevateYou.com, L-E-V-A-T-E. Y-O-U.com and use promo code IDIOTS for 15% off your entire purchase. Now let's start the show. Hezzy's here. Yes, sir. Uh, our guy flew in from L.A., the Cargo group. Van Lathan. Yo, this <laughs> guy. <laughs> this <laughs> Did you know that? You know we didn't actually have that like health drink ad for this episode. It was just like, for yo, me. get yeah. that as the opener. You've been exaggerating though. I haven't seen you in yo, person was, in a minute. You've been I'm, exaggerating. I'm, yeah, bro. like I'm what really disappointed at your weight. You act like you got back big, big, bro. Nah. You ain't big at all. What y'all don't understand is I've lost thirty pounds since you said that. Yeah, like I'm on Monjaro. The, is that Ozempic? The, Ozempic, yeah. So but, it's the waist just been the falling diabetes, off. What's that? The diabetes like you, shit, right? Yeah, stick, stick it in your motherfucking Why stomach. Why is it called Majara? There's two different ones. There's it's like the Pepsi and Coke of fat nigga shit. Mm. So it's like... <laughs> it's not fat, bro. Let so, it go. So, you so, got to so, stop. So, you want to so, be fat so bad, bro. Let it go. So, so it's like... But the Ozempic is one. You even described it with some shit that makes you fat. <laughs> 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 no, but seriously, I was I was I was going to the gym and working out really super hard and yeah. the you know, I'm getting older so the diet had to change and so I got on that and I've been losing weight. I'm in the gym every day though. Everybody yeah. on that shit. Everybody, I know mad people like I'll be seeing people and I'll be like, "Yo, what's up, man? You, you know, you look good. You been working out? You vegan?" We're like, "Nah, I'm on that pin." Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious, yeah. man. I don't want to say no names. Say I'm, it, you know, say it, nah, say it. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm Come not going to do that. One person in particular, I really saw it. I was like happy for them. And they like, now nah, I'm on that pen. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. What are the side effects, though? Um, They could be fucked up. So at first, the side effects, you just get nauseous and stuff. But as the, uh, the dosage has gone up, you know, nigga be a little constipated. Sometimes you can get a little depressed. Really? Yeah, but it's but I'm I'm used to it now. It what works. do you do when you're constipated? Bruh. Put his thumb up his ass. I was about to ask. Hey, I, hey, I was, hey I no bullshit ask. though. No bullshit though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Normally, Hold on, about to go there. Normally, Let's go. normally you could just like just wait it out and then it ends up coming out. Okay. But a couple of days ago I had this Ghost Brothers interview and it was supposed to start at eleven. What's is that like the Black Ghostbusters the, movie? The Black <laughs> <no>. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of the Ghostbusters? The Ghostbusters? No, did they make a Black yeah. Ghostbusters movie? No, they have the Ghost a, Brothers? The Ghostbusters have a show. <laughs> it's not even ghosts, it's just police they're afraid of. They're, like, they're taking over the neighborhood. What are we going to do? No, they like they're black guys and they like they see paranormal shit. Oh man. And so I like I was the interview was supposed to start at eleven, but I was on the yeah. toilet. And it just it it wouldn't, and so I actually had to get something to grease it up. I had to get some uh, some coconut oil and go in there and help it move Whoa. out. Like you did put your thumb up your ass. Had to put my thumb on my ass. God damn, man. Whoa. We ain't Whoa. even five minutes Whoa. in, bro. Whoa. 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 Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, hold on. I had to get the Whoa. coconut oil. Okay. I had this to get the coconut oil. I had to get the coconut oil. I wish we had a camera on everybody in here. Everybody in here. <laughs> we Taylor do. Looked up. Wait a minute. First of Chris all, like, yeah. this is the type of shit I don't like. Everybody wait, in here has been constipated before. I was about to say, everybody in here jammed their fist up their ass. Everybody here has been constipated before. Take, it, it, bro, <laughs> but it wasn't going to happen. So I had yeah. to take the coconut oil, go around the edges, and it came out. And then after I looked at it, I was like, God <laughs> damn. <laughs> so by the way, did that shit work? Can you really make your butt throw up? 
<laughs> How that shit really works? What? Why? Putting your finger in your butt, like how you put your finger on your no. throat? No, no, bro. Okay, butt throw. It's not like your butt throw. I didn't think about it. I just made my butt throw up. It's not your butt throw. It's you so did make your, your butt throw up. Your 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 turtle heading, your right? sphincter. Like like your sphincter, yeah. and it's like it's poking out, and you know oh. it's about. To, so you just want to let it. So I had to go. I had, the crazy thing was the coconut oil was in the other room. Yeah. So I had to like walk. Get to the go fuck gra- out of I here. Had to, this is a true story. I'm With it poking my- out? It was poking out, yeah. So it was poking out, but you couldn't get the whole thing out. It wasn't. It was too painful. Was something else in there? Shut what? the fuck up. No, I'm being like, no, serious. No, 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 I'm not. Wait, and that's where you stop. Yeah, you right. said way wild right, shit. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, massage the edges. Why is it going to be in my ass except for shit? You know what I'm saying? So what else? Would, nothing else could be in it. But anyway, it, it worked. Terrible. And since then, I've been taking Miralax. You just got to deal with it. You know? Oh, the Miralax. Yeah, it's a through. Miralax. But Y'all fucking the game up for diabetics, though, man. Say How? again? Because the medicine is, uh, has skyrocketed for actual diabetics. 1500 a pop. Not this one. Not the, not the Majoro. Not the Majoro? The other one is $1,500 a pop. Shockingly easy to get. Really? Went in there. I thought that the doctor was going to... You know, take blood and do the whole deal. No, nope. he just looked at him and was like, "Yeah, you need yeah. it." Like, yeah, yeah, boom, thousand dollars, bam. You didn't even ask for the medication. Do they know, do the they know what people are using it for? Do they know people are using it to, to lose weight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. damn. 100. percent So when you took that shit that you had to coconut oil your ass rim for. Mm-hmm. Did anything? That's crazy. <laughs> Coconut oil your ass room sounds like oil up no, your no, ankles. No, like your you, know the, tap, you know what the funny thing is? <laughs> That's crazy. Like, what's, what's the funny thing? <laughs> what's the funny thing? In years past, <laughs> this is the funny bro, thing. Bro, Just bro. rub it around. <laughs> <laughs> not, that's not, but that's not even how I did it. Oh, you went by like that? I, I went. I all yeah. I I spread the. I went the other way. Oh, you know, whoa! You know, in, in, in years past, you twerked yourself. Yo, in, in, whoa! In years past, I would have been embarrassed. But yeah, nigga, I had to coconut oil my ass. Yeah, Why yeah, would you yeah. be embarrassed? Yeah. Yeah. Don't be embarrassed, The bro. shit came out, and then I'm like, I got to change. I got to do something different, because, like, this can't happen. Yeah, you can't be coconut oil in your ass. Right? And it was, like, it was all rocky when it was in the toilet. You coconut know, oil like, your ass thing. sounds sexy. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, Sean. There's something gay about it. <laughs> 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 like beige, you know what I'm saying? That was a little Trump. I put the big, big Trump, Trump, Trump card down. <laughs> big Trump card down. <laughs> All right, happy to have you though, Van. Yo, man. it's great, man. And uh, it's great that you're losing weight. Yeah. Yeah, feeling you good. You look bro. fantastic, man. Thank you. Feeling good. Lifting weights, doing the whole nine, doing it for dad, you know? Yeah, we're not we're rest in peace. To you yeah, RIP, up. man. We're not, um, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not lost on us that you're here, you know, the second day after the writer's strike. I <laughs> don't have anything else to do. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is a good right. ass point. You know man. what I mean? Yeah. Second day after the writer's strike, wow. man is here. Whole town shut down, bro. Really? Fear, 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 palpable fear in Los Angeles right Why? now. Why? Um, because uh, think about any other city that has like a major industry that's the lifeblood of that industry. That's true. And this is like in a real way the lifeblood of Los Angeles, mm-hmm. like making those types of things go. Um, and so when there's a glitch like this, everybody gets a little bit like impatient, like scared, because this affects everything, right? Can, can you explain what the strike is about and what the writers are fighting for? They want more money. They want- I think it's specific. It's a so streaming, streaming, streaming residual. Yeah. yeah. So ex- and explain like why that's important and how the transition to streaming has kind of created. So there, there are a couple things, and I'm not gonna like I don't want to speak too much for some of the people who could probably articulate it a little bit better, but as Television has moved, a couple of things have changed. One thing has changed is the resi- the residuals and the way that you make your money off the residuals, right? And, and residuals, once again, are like once a show, when a, when an episode gets played again, mm-hmm. be it on yeah. the same channel or other channels, right. you're getting a fee every single time. You get a fee every single time. And then when things go on streaming, there's no longer that fee every single time. And then not only is there no longer that fee every single time, right? But also remember that the streaming companies are cagey with their analytics. They don't even tell you the amount of streams. Not mm. so really. So you can't even get money in the way that like artists get money on Spotify plays. Right. So because you don't know how many plays the episodes get. I right. wonder so about so the, that with TV too. Do they get paid per stream on TV? No. Well, well they, they don't, right? There's a way that the residuals are, are, are calculated and formulated, but with streaming, it's a completely different thing. First of all, for some people, there just aren't any. They and just buy very, it out entirely. Right. Yeah. And then secondly, even 
it's harder to track it because like like we all know, all of that information yeah. of all the streaming and all of that, the performance is proprietary. They don't have to share it with you. Yeah. So they're trying to change that. And also there's something else with the writer's room. Like let's say we're all doing a show, right? Yeah. We're going to have a writer's, writer's room. There might be 10 people, and you know this, you've had writers, you've been in writer's rooms before. You might have 10 people employed on the writer's room. But now it's kind of like if we're doing a show and only the three of us want to write it, then we might do like a mini room. And that room might only be three or four people, two or three people that are going to write the entire show. Mm -hmm. And the writers don't like that because the less people there are in the room, the less, less jobs there are for people. Yeah. Yeah, so they're talking shit, about that, that. That shit has changed drastically over the past year. Like, uh, my I'm writers sorry. Room. Did you get like a facial or something? No. Uh, it's amazing, right? You look incredible. Thank you. Dr. <laughs> Natasha Sandy, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's happening? You see me out here in these streets. You know what I mean? Thank you. Did you do this because Van was coming? You want to no, Dr. Me? Sandy, I saw Dr. Sandy two weeks ago. She, I saw Dr. Sandy two weeks ago. She can't give me a little chemical pill. You know what I mean? Got my products back, you know? You haven't been off of them? I hadn't been off. Well, I hadn't been using them. I, hadn't, I didn't have any. I hadn't seen her. You know what I mean? I talked to her, but I hadn't seen yeah. her. Yeah. I mean, you came in here a few episodes looking like driftwood. So it's nice that so it's nice that you're that you're shining like you are today. Like a couple episodes, I was like, man, he just stopped giving a fuck. Like he's just going he backsliding a little bit. Yeah, he's gonna let the new I, set do the I work. I didn't see my people. Doctor <laughs> <laughs> Natasha saying, but man, dude, I had to like insult you based on how <laughs> to balance. How fucking great you look today, dude. This is insane. And I got a haircut yesterday. Thank you. Yeah. But no, you know, the writer's rooms have changed so much because uh, like even with the, the first season of my talk show, writer's room was way bigger. Yeah. Second season, absolutely not. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So you saw this coming. The thing that scares me about the writer's crack this time is the language that the writers are trying to get in there about chat GPT. I told you about that. And AI. Oh, yeah. what's that? Oh. The that, that you can't, basically you can't have AI write shows. And they said No. No. So what did that tell you? Like, oh, it's coming. Bro, they, bro, that, of all the stuff that mm. my friends in the guild have been telling me about, that's the most shocking yeah. thing. They said, hey, we want to make sure that there are guardrails against having AI write scripts. And the fucking studio said no. You know why? Because they're going to have AI write, write scripts. Write script. It's just like taxis and Ubers, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Like, of course, the taxi commission was like, make Uber illegal because that's your job. Right. But there could be something that comes out and replaces it. And it's going to be Chad late. GPT. Now is, I mean, listen, now is a great time to strike, but it might not be a great time to strike because they take a little bit too long. You know, you get a hit show from a Chad GPT or it's an over. AI. It's over. Game over. <laughs> Game Y'all, that would be, y'all, that, that, that might actually, there might actually be real blood shit in Los Angeles in some way if they cybered all of those people. Do you, everything in Los Angeles is affected by this. The, if, if there's less money to go around, there's less money for the valets at these restaurants, there's less money for the, the drivers that don't have to yep. take people, there's less money for the chefs. It, it's all one big huge Yeah, you've got to look at Hollywood in the same way that uh, college towns... Ex same thing. It, it's 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 just like uh, I don't know I, where is Alabama. Where is the University Tuscaloosa. of Tuscaloosa? So it's like without the University of Alabama, is Tuscaloosa even a functional no, city? Like, I'm from Baton Rouge. Without but without LSU, yeah. Like in and around a stadium, everybody who works there, everybody who sells tens of merch, thousands of jobs, tens directly, of thousands who's directly, and then directly. indirectly, it's all the bars, all Absolutely. the restaurants, everything. Like That's Dis Hollywood. like Disney World in Florida. Like yeah. Florida, like how you kind of calculate that whole thing. So it's gonna be tough, it, and it got tough in in 2007 or whatever. Before when it happens, it's gonna be tough now. And how long will this strike go for? I mean, they said I, I've been here in three months, but they said if it goes for three months, then that'll bring us into the fall. So things probably really won't get start, started back until going January. until like January. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't know. This one's going to last a long time because I don't even see how they figure out the residuals for the screaming shit. Now I'm that's going to be, gonna be this is going to be crazy, but it's also a great opportunity if you want to write a movie or write a TV show. There are going to be guys that are striking. Absolutely. That you would never be able to get because they're working on the highest level Absolutely. TV shows, highest level films. And you could be like, hey, we have three months. Do you want to build something together independently? Absolutely. Right. And they might have some time for you. So th there's an opportunity for writers to actually do their passion projects while they're striking. I thought they're not allowed to write They're at not all. allowed to write, uh, sad, do on SAG things, but you can't tell someone not to write. You could write on a project. Well, I'll oh, be, I think there's some stuff I'm working on right now. And Oh, these, they not even. Nah, they like pencils down. Don't yeah. hit me on it. Even though it's not contractually obligated, it's just a few they people. They are. It, they, I mean. 
people are gonna work. You already know this. Yeah. yeah. But like people, people are gonna yeah. work. But dude, but I like literally, we got something right now at a place, and we were scrambling to get everything in place for May first because after that we couldn't do nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's like that. I mean, I'm part yeah. of the WGA, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm trying to figure out what I'm even going to be doing because I'm supposed to do the Daily Show the week of May 15th. Oh, they fucked that up. But listen, we're improv, baby. We can go in there with... And just riff. Hey, word. Yeah. I they gonna... shut the show down. I know. You're part of the WGA, GBT plus... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I voted. I mean, I voted, I voted on whether or not to strike. And did you vote strike? Yeah. Nigga, it don't sound yeah. like you voted strike. Right? Like, it, it, it was, was a little hesitation on that one, right, Charlotte. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, bro, like you, about to get, you about to be I don't think that's public enemy that. number yeah. one nah, I, with, I, the I, whole, I, with the whole, with the whole, it don't seem like you voted strike. I, 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 I voted get y'all strike in January and June <laughs> when I got there on the fucking daily show. I voted yes. I'll tell you this, though. Um, this is a great, this is a great, this, this, this is a great opportunity for podcasts. Talk to me. I'm going to tell you why. We live in an era, uh, usually when these strikes happen, like 2007 was like the rise of reality show TV, right? Because oh, everybody had to go get unscripted content. Mm, and yeah. you'll probably see a lot more reality shows now, but think about people like Brilliant Idiots, you know? Think about people like Drink Champs, uh, you know? All of these places, har harbor decisions, these people that already record content. You are right. You know what I'm saying? You are you, right. You can, you can license your content to these networks now. If I was some of these networks, mm. that would be the smart thing to do, right? We yeah. give people... Three hours of, of content a week, or two hours of content a week, right? Shit. You take that content, 22-minute shows, put it on your networks. Same Could, way that BT and VH1 is licensed in the Breakfast Club every morning. Bang, you can do the bang, same thing with bang. podcasts. Like, it, it would make sense to me. You Absolutely. Know? I mean, I remember back in the day, I used to watch a Howard Stern show on E. Absolutely. Got, and it was really a flamethrower. It yeah, was like absolutely. a 30-minute episode condensed mm. down to the best parts. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that if could you, if, if you were Him in the thing was him and the mic, and then, then they, yeah, the That's same right. thing. Yeah. If you're a network like Comedy Central, go get one. Get, go get a comedy podcast. No brainer. Put it on. If you're uh, a, a VH1, you go get a horrible decision. Whatever it is. Like, yeah. just go. It's, all, it's so much content out here mm. that they could just be licensing to put on their network. 100%. And to me, and that'll help podcasts in general. And it doesn't even need to stop the podcast. You basically go, yo, can we do a condensed version of that show you already do? You That's already right. put it yep. out. That's right. Whoa. 85 South Show. Any, all of these different, you know. Whoa. Uh, and you don't have like access it. to the talent. I saw something this morning where Gwyneth Paltrow was doing an interview where she's talking about, like, who was better in bed out of Ben Affleck and Brad Pitt. Like, that's the kind of content. Who? Who podcast I can't remember she what she said. I think it was Call Her Daddy. Like, and that's the type of stuff because you're gonna have access to those people. That's right. I think Ben Affleck is is yeah breaking that down. Better you than Brad? Ben Affleck better than Brad? Yes. Why? Brad's soft. He's a hater. I think Dude. Brad's a better kisser, but I think Ben Affleck will just yeah split lips. Ben man. Affleck is like you know he on Adderall and shit. Yeah, y'all give Ben Affleck too much credit. He ruined two superheroes, bro. What you talking yep. about? He ruined Daredevil and fucking Batman. Yep. Ben Affleck was bomb as Batman. Yeah, Ben Affleck God, was great. What? The Batman. movie, the movies weren't good. Because y'all don't know, y'all don't know the, old Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movies weren't good. But y'all don't know old God, Batman. Just Batman. Batman. He wasn't good neither. Nah, he was oh, dope. he was nice. Nah, he was dope. Do you know what was the? It was a graphic novel by uh, the graphic Batman novel by Frank Miller Frank Miller yeah the Dark Knight Strikes Back and it was phenomenal yeah I actually would have liked if they grade him up a little bit more okay, to be a little bit more so rank Batman's then who's the number one Batman of all time Christian Bale Christian Bale uh, Christian Bale, uh, Christian Bale. I, uh, I'm, I'm Stop a little I'm, I'm Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton Michael Keaton or Christian nah, Bale Mike, if, we, if you really go and rewatch that old Batman then, then old Michael school Keaton Batman, Batman. Christian, Bale. Nah, yeah. Christian Bale Christian Bale Ben is the worst Batman nah not to me you're acting crazy who's he, not, who, not, what Batman is he better than he's better he's than George two. Clooney Number better one, he's definitely better than George Batman? Clooney. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he played it better. Nah, you bro, really he don't be knowing what the fuck you talking about. He ain't better than Clooney. He ain't better than Clooney. He ain't better than Clooney, bro. Fucking Clooney was in the Batcave cooking up Casamigos, bro. He's the number one <laughs> Batman of all fucking time for that and that alone. Fuck out of here. Y'all are crazy. This is fucking crazy for no reason. Mm. Let's say, who the do we got? Twilight dude was better than Robert Pattinson, definitely better than Ben Affleck. I didn't really like that Keanu Reeves played Batman? When the fuck did Keanu Reeves play Batman? He played him animated. Oh, that don't count. Yeah, you gotta yeah. get with all that. When 
Adam West. Oh shit! How we Yo, sleep Val on Adam Kilmer West? Val Kilmer is Batman. When the fuck did Val Kilmer play Batman? Batman yeah. Forever. Nigga, you didn't watch have you Batman, seen bro. Batman. You didn't watch no, Batman. No, I don't fuck with DC. Yeah. yeah. Well, then what are you talking? About? It's the pod, bro. <laughs> it's the pod. <laughs> 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 what the fuck you mean? I'm talking about. Listen, why do I gotta be the one that know what he's talking about? All these podcasts that exist out here with motherfuckers just chatting That's shit, fast. saying whatever. Bro, but no, what the fuck they talking about? Gotta be held to a higher standard. I want to be average and mediocre and typical. Like every other podcast. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right? Okay? I want Ebony K. Williams to tell me to step my fucking game up in the podcast. Tell, tell me about Ebony. Ebony. Tell me what happened with Ebony. Gently. <laughs> yeah, tell me what happened gently yeah. with Ebony. What happened with Ebony? I, I really don't even know no more, man. Y'all are crazy. Right, come on, son. It's because you got to go back to the original. You got to go back to what she said with Ayanla. But she had a 23-minute interview with Ayanla. I didn't see the 23 minutes. I just saw the clip. About the bus driver. Says women have off standards for men in this society because some won't date a bus driver due to social status. I date a bus driver if he loved driving the bus. Who said that? Ayanna. Ayanna. Play the clip, play the That's clip. Beautiful. What's wrong with that? I know that you said that you cannot teach a man or tell a man how to be a man. So I will not ask you to indict men in this question. But I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build, when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? <laughs> <laughs> Would you date if he owns the bus. If he owns no. it, if he owns the bus, See, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm -hmm. that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm -hmm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm -hmm. if he was, if he loved driving the bus. If he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date him. So there's only a minute and 30 seconds of that. Yeah. But what's your thoughts? <clears throat> I love that. <laughs> I'm with you. I mean, I think... Expound, maybe? I think, I, 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 think, I think what Ebony explained in that clip I mean, it's, was her it's, preference, and that's her preference. No, but I think it's... I think, what is her name? Ayanna. Like, I think it's... I think it's beautiful that I think she. What Ayanna yeah. said was great. No, it, I think it's beautiful she's lying. Like, and I think <laughs> and I support her ability to lie I about. Lying. Who loves driving a bus, Charla? <laughs> bus drivers. You about to shit well, on? Well, hold on. You about to shit on everyday working class people? But, but here's the thing. No, though. her caveat was as long as he loves driving a bus. There's a million right, people right, that right, love driving yeah, buses. Well, I mean, Yo, that, like, that love their job. That love you their have job. to love their job, but takes pride in their Yo, job. Have you ever seen a custodian that goes around the building singing and he's happy and he says hi to everybody? Folks yeah. are happy to no, see no, him. No, 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 no. In Listen, in, in all seriousness. You ever I, got on a bus with a person that's driving? He's like, Yo, I had mad bus I was like, Hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm joking, I'm joking, yeah. obviously. I love that she says this, and I think that that's, uh, I think she'll have much happier relationships in her life. And I, I genuinely believe that. Then, And listen, I don't want to be too personal about Ebony, but like, does 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 Ebony have any kids? Like, I, yeah. So it's like, I don't take advice on relationships from people who don't have relationships that I want. Shit. Huh? Um, it's like, it's like if you're, if you're, I, I, I have respect for Ebony, but like if if I don't, if I'm a woman, I don't want to be in my 40s with no children. She's not in her 40s. She's not in her 40s. Okay, like, 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 50s? Easy. 50s? No, 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 no. She's, she's in her 30s. Uh, look, this, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I'm sure there's a lot of women that are looking at Ebony going like, well, you, you doing all this work searching for a not bus driver and here you are alone or whatever. And I mean, it's like, I, I, I there's a lot of women but that- there, but, there's mad, but there's mad women who actually relate to Ebony. There, no, no, I, I'm not saying there's a woman. And I think that, and I yeah. think that there one are- One might be in this room, but I, I You fuck, you, you, 
Play, play, matter of fact, play this clip. Play this play, clip. This, play this, this clip. is what Ebony said. Play this yeah, clip. Because yeah, yeah. she got backlash. And, and Taylor probably deleted her comment that she left on this clip. Play the clip. Play this clip, Taylor. I am going to play, play the clip. Go, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> come, on, come on, Taylor. What was that from? <laughs> Go back, back to the front. Why did I say that? Why did I say that? 50,000 plus comments posted on social. I only saw a handful that even considered the possibility of a bus owner being a more aspirational position and recognizing that I am actually speaking and pouring into the ascension of black men when I said what I said. But see, no, some of y'all were too busy naming and shaming me personally and black women in general as undesirable gold diggers and much worse. Now, I suspect that some of y'all are the same men that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to be coddled by parents that said, well, that's okay, as long as you're doing your best. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. So no, my dear, C's and D's or any other form of mediocrity is not okay. No, I will not create a soft place for you or anybody that I love to fall comfortably into the bigotry of low expectations. So I'm going to say one more time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. My mother Gloria drove one for years. But could it be that black America has been sold a narrative of average, regular, and typical being good enough for us? Hmm. Well, see, that's called white supremacy. And in this case, it takes the form of conditioning black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass. But see, because I know the truth about black folk in America, no, average is not and will never be good enough for me. And the gag is, I don't think it's good enough for you either. Girl, I, I got to say one thing. I've never seen this tactic used by a black person on black people. I've seen the, <laughs> I've seen the, if you disagree with me, you racist, used on white people. Yeah. And we just got to sit there like, bro, uh, that's uh, Andrew, you haven't been paying attention. We use it on each other all the time. Yeah, but I try <laughs> to stay away from you guys, you know. <laughs> no, but that is a wild. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. That is significantly worse than what she said at first. I like agree. significantly yes. worse. Yeah. First of all, there's a couple of things here. And by the and this, and this this clip too, because uh, I spoke to Ebony. She said this clip is actual, actually four minutes. I haven't seen the four. So minutes. I, right. I love Ebony K. Williams. I think she's entitled to date whoever she wants to date and have whatever standards that she wants I to date for that person. I think we passed the relationship. Comment. Okay. This this, this this right here though, there's a couple of things. Number one, societies are most definitely, definitely backboned by the average people. Absolutely. That is one Everyday working class percent. people. Yes. Like, and one reason why we can't seem to prioritize the middle class. In, uh, in America is because we're too busy demonizing what it means to be middle class. We're too busy acting as if somebody who has a job and Who do you think fought all those wars? I mean, just being it's for the real bus drivers you. that fight the wars. It's Absolutely. not these rich motherfuckers that she wants to date or these other people that want to date. It's the bus drivers, it's the plumbers, it's the electricians. They're out there when shit gets put, what is it, when- uh, When shit gets the fan. When, when shit hits the fan, when push comes to shove, we ask all those people that she's saying have well, undesirable jobs to go out there and risk no, their no, no. fucking life so we can speak English. No, we, shut the fuck up. But you know what the crazy thing is? We're saying that as, as if it's some sort of uh, like hypothetical. No, we just did that throughout the pandemic. Yes. Oh, that's facts. Like, like, yeah. like, we we yes. just yeah. did that throughout the pandemic yeah. when what we were doing was shut down. It was the people that were going to work at the, for takeout places, at Walmart, 100%. doctors, nurses, all of those people that became the backbone of a functioning American society. No, they didn't become, and they, then were. they were. Already were. Already but, were. But we, but we leaned on them, and then as soon as it was over, they we got completely fired. forget yeah. about yeah. it. Like, like totally fired. forgot about yeah. it. So just kind of, after that, kind of seeing this whole narrative again, it's just like we never learned nothing. I, I think that the mm. problem with the, mm. the reasoning is there's a, she acts as if there's like a gate to enter the dating and that gate is financial. Would you want your partner to make tons of money? Would I like it if my wife made $50 million a year? Oh, that'd be awesome, Yeah, yeah. right? As I'm sure she would like it if I did. Are there 10 other criteria that are actually more important to me and should be more important to you when it comes to picking a mate? Yes. So I like the other lady's response, Ayanla. Ayanla Von Zant. Ayanla Von Zant's response, which was like, if he loves driving a bus, but if he's also good to his mother, if he loves me, if That's he right. cares about me, those things are more valuable. What if he likes driving a bus because he actually likes coaching high school football? 
and that allows him to focus as much as he possibly can on those kids. He's not you know, grading tests and doing all that other stuff. He's driving to school, driving them home, and then he's dedicating his fucking life to those kids. That's beautiful, bro. Right? That documentary called uh, Counterpunch, and they were talking about Chris Colbert, the boxer, he's like at 140, 147. Yep. The dude who was his coach. Brooklyn kid, isn't he? Brooklyn kid, yeah. The dude who was his coach had a day job like, at like putting the fucking wire in the ground or whatever they do, contests and whatever. And he would do that job so that he could be off at five o'clock so that he could then work with baby B-Hop after that. Mm -hmm. And it, so he would have his evenings free. Mm -hmm. People have all kinds of things that they like to do. Yeah. People that's have right. all kinds. And the, happiness, the, happiness is, a, 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 success is subjective. Yes. Success is whatever makes you happy. Right. You know what I mean? And I can never call somebody average, mediocre, or typical who's doing something that they love to do. Even I don't care what it is. It doesn't make you average, mediocre, or typical. Like no. who you are as a human right. being makes you that. E even yeah. if you don't love to do it, I think what her point was, if you're not miserable doing it, yeah. right? If you because if you drive the bus all day long and you like this fucking bus, these fucking people, I hate them. Well, you're gonna bring that into your relationship. You're gonna bring that home to your family. Yeah, don't date a miserable person. Right. I agree. Right. That's what she. Yeah. That's what she. You know, what, I, I spoke to Ebony, and that's what she's saying. She's saying that she is. Uh, she's trying to encourage people, especially black men, to like just do better, basically, like to not just settle with. What she considers you think, mediocre. You think the black dudes are just average. settling with it? But right? I don't. I don't. But here's the thing: I don't even think it's a race thing. Yeah, I think nobody we're talking about is. Good old fashioned capitalism. Yeah, it's not that we're yeah. talking about the one percent and the and the ninety nine percent. That's but I, I don't think, think that people need more motivation. I think people want to be more successful. They want to be more rich. They want yeah. to do these other things. But I think there also are people out there that really enjoy their lifestyle. If that lifestyle is provided for by being a bus driver or some other job that she describes as like mediocre or typical, but they can do these other things and live a great, well-balanced life, See, they are happy and there's nothing wrong with that. And honestly, a lot of girls should check that out because they're going to be way happier in that relationship than the billionaire that's cheating on them with fucking pussy out there in Dubai every single week. Well, I, <laughs> actually, you know what? I, I think people need motivation to come back to the mean or to the average a little bit. I think people need motivation to put the mics down, stop fucking rapping, right. go get a trade, that's right. become a barber, learn how that's to right. be a mechanic, yeah. learn how to have a job. I think people need motivation to turn Instagram and the rest of this shit yeah. off that's not going to pop for you. And understand that you could still go to the Laker game, have a great life, put, send your kids to a great college and all of that, yeah. and do all of that by having a great job yeah, that I, might not be able to buy 50 bottles at I, the club. I think America has this sick obsession with celebrity, and I think celebrities, uh, you know, sometimes over estimate their position in society. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Because we're not doing anything special. Nope. We are sitting here on these microphones, talking, <laughs> laughing, having a good time, barely knowing what we're talking about. Do you think that we are more significant than somebody in the military? Are we more significant than law enforcement? Bro. Are we more significant than... than, than Come on, stop. I'm just me, I'm just saying like yeah. that. Engineers, architects, they probably look at us and be like average motherfuckers. Yeah. You know what I mean? And by the way, it's definitely kids, definitely kids out there that's busting their ass in school. Yeah. And they getting C's. Yeah. They're just dumb. Also, this is <laughs> hell and, and, and I'm, I'm just being for real. She was like, she was like, as long as you work hard, there's a kid they somewhere. Working hard, bro. They, they were working hard. There are kids yeah. somewhere that that busting their ass that bring home C's. I know this may surprise y'all. I was never an A student. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. That doesn't surprise anybody. <laughs> How dare the person I know was getting D say that? Actually, excuse me, I actually was an honor roll. I was on the honor roll four years in high school. What's high school? Shout oh. them out so we Lower can Marian shut it down. Lower High School, yes. Lower Marion? Right? You, you missed the yes. easy lob right I know. there. No, she, no, no. When she said no. honor roll, I thought you were going. See? See? <laughs> See what I'm saying? You saw Taylor? Now look, Andrew. Now Taylor. Andrew, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Andrew. Let me, you you week, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something though. I could run faster than your sperm though. So relax. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's He's a comedian. That is funny. comedian. That's funny. You got I did not comedian. That is comedian. She has that one chamber. I did not have that one chamber. She has every right. 
She is everywhere. Holy shit. But you see how you took that? That's a comic. That is a comic. That's a comic. That is a comic. That is a great joke. That is a great joke. I've been mad. That is a great joke. Holy shit. That is a great joke. Taylor, you won the exchange. You don't have to be like, oh, you won the exchange. You can smile. We got to have a meeting before you do stuff like this. Nobody told you to send that nuke to that country just now. Like, that was. What the fuck? I know that is a comedian. Because I'd have been like, me and Adam, we just. We that shit was heart painful. Heart. I ain't gonna lie, it was painful, but that is a phenomenal joke. <laughs> that is a phenomenal <laughs> joke. I don't know why you can't wait. Because I need to mean, stop playing with me. Happened, stop stop winning winning you already knew the nuke. You won the exchange. I'm, I'm fine. What happens after the nuke? Nothing. Just keep going with the conversation. It's done. You want me to say something back? No, no, no. Leave me alone. There's nothing I can say. I lost. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Wow. She wrote that at the crib, too. She had that one in there. She had that one in there. She had that one in there. No fucking way. She wrote, right. she wrote that at the crib. We've been doing it for how long. She's sitting down. Right. She, got, that she, got the, she got the rap in her head. That the shit, next time uh, this uh, motherfucker uh, say something nah. to me, yeah. like, the next time this nigga, I can't wait. I can't wait. All those writers on strike, I see where they went. They got the DMs. They got the DMs. Taylor, where were you hiding at? In one of your... Uh, <laughs> it's not a coincidence that the writer wouldn't yeah. be right here. Taylor, Taylor got balls. You got a joke. That was good. Somebody was sitting around like, you know what, Taylor? I'm tired of them getting on your ass on the podcast. Yeah. Why did someone got right here? one for show. The whole cast. Show me what you got for me. Come on. Come on. Say. Go ahead. Tell me what you got. I know that, you got That was sensational. You crowdsourced it. That was... <laughs> you crowdsourced it. Now, what we're doing is... You we're diminishing it. a black woman. I know, Why sir. can't she come up with something great? Why does she got to be average? Why does she got to be typical? Why can't she just come up with a great line? All right. And wow. insult my humanity. <laughs> my, my purpose for being on this earth. I, uh... Ugh. I mean, listen, man. Jeez. Jeez. Right. I, I, spoke I miss this energy. I haven't been on here in a while. <laughs> like, like, I didn't know what was going to happen. She, <laughs> she, bro, she, bro, she did you not fucking look right bro. now. I was like, violent. I'm broken. I'm broken. I didn't know what was going to happen. That was violent. What are we talking about? She did not look That was violent, Taylor. That was violent, bro. I'm not going to lie. That was violent, so damn, Taylor. that was violent. And now she's still mad. I'm diminishing a black woman. That's oh, what I'm telling God. you. Come on, Taylor. That's you already won, dude. You don't even got to do that. Yeah. There was no reason to pull up that just now. No, I was OD. You know what I'm saying? No, I was OD. You say that now. This led to violence for no reason. Oh, my God. Chris <laughs> handed a shitty wife his ass with for no goddamn reason. <laughs> Chris, like, here's your wet wife. Jesus oh, Christ, man. Shit. Listen, Taylor, that was phenomenal. No, that was good. Tell that was a great joke. This is a good one. Uh, TikTok bomb. Good segue. TikTok bomb. Wait, did we child. finish what we were saying? Well, I think we finished. It. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I'm I'm discombobulated now. I don't know. What did we? What, what's the moral of the story? I better get the condoyle on. What's the moral? Taylor just stopped at this whole room. So, so, come you on, almost, son. Right? I know. He but, almost said it. What's the moral of the story with the Ebony? Coconut oil. Coconut. Oh, oh yeah. I do have one. They, point they, I'll put do on to, they do need to leave Ebony alone now. Wait, who is they? Just everybody. They they was on our ass bad. No, nah, but you can't say that. You can't say, no, you can't say that. And the reason why you can't say that is, and I told, I told, I completely disagree with everything she said. And I think it's actually an unhealthy way of looking at things. But yeah. when you make a public statement, yeah. and you're a public figure. You're opening that statement up to public criticism. To public scrutiny. Yeah. What it is. Like yeah. you, there's nothing you can do about it. She has a news show, like on the Grio. She got up there. She made a statement. Yeah. People have the right to respond to that statement. Only thing I will say, and I, I said this on Breakfast Club. It's like, you know, you got to be careful about stuff like that because none of us have a career without the people. everyday working class mm -hmm. people. Yep. Those are the Who people do you think listen to this podcast listen to while the they podcast. do their jobs that are mundane in nature? That's right. They're buying our books. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and, and to Ebony's point, she did say that she was talking about, she said she's not even talking about money. She's talking about skill set. She wants people to the the the. Nah. She was capped. To aspire she to have a greater skill. She was, she was moonwalking like, yeah. on that one, bro. No it's way. Not, nah, I want to like, uplift black men. No, you want a rich black dude. That's what it is. And a lot of people want a rich partner. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are other qualities. The problem is, oh, this is gonna sound crazy for me to say because I was raised with no religion. But like, when religion does not play a part in society, and the only thing that we value is money, we start to lose 
the value of a person being truly good. That's if the, yeah. if you grow up in religion and you see a good man or woman, that is really valuable. Yeah. Them being rich is also valuable. But looking at that person and be like, wow, this is a good God-fearing human who's gonna treat me well and treats the people around him well, that is a great person I'd like to engage with. When religion's out the fucking way, what else are we judging by? But do you no, need but, but, religion? Do you need religion I, to respect I, people? I, I you you shouldn't. You, so I used to think that you did, and I had a therapist, and the therapist, I guess, uh, he I was, need one after what Taylor said. To he me. was saying, <laughs> "Can you recommend?" <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, that, was yeah. that was the most violent thing ever. Yo, said on she don't play around. She, and she, and she, she said to me, "Like you're not the one making fun of her every fucking week." While I defend her. I know, that oh, was she got crazy. one for Charlotte too. So, oh, it's, it's probably a no, file no, 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 in there. She got one for Charlotte. Now, 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 now that we're she on the subject, me and Taylor had this discussion last week because unlike y'all, I listen to Taylor. You know what I mean? So Taylor, you gonna let him do this? You gonna let him divide us? When I'm always here for you. What jokes do you have for Charlotte? I said, unlike y'all, yeah, I, no, I said, that. unlike y'all, I listen to Taylor. Taylor Bullshit. shit. Taylor sent everybody text a minority in the room. Taylor sent a bunch of <laughs> texts to the group chat. I was the only person responding. By the yeah. way, still nobody has responded. No one. It's been seven well, days. Me, you, and him. She I didn't put anyone else. She I didn't see anything. What you say? No, and you that was the whole brain in this group no, chat. No, it wasn't. I don't think so. Yes, you and him. What'd no, it wasn't. Say? Let me look and see, goddammit. If you say it was, I know it wasn't because you have the worst recollection. Of any human Man, being I got I've ever known before. Y'all got the side brilliant in his group chat? All right. <laughs> Damn, I see. Oh, no, you're right. It was just me and Sean. But <laughs> Damn, Alex. Look at Alex. Now Sean, Alex Damn. still plays. Sean Yo, never replied, right? I'm spilling down your rolls, bro. I, I, I have to bring that back. I called Taylor because yeah. I was upset about Do you know why I didn't reply to I was Taylor? upset that she was upset. Because I never say nothing. It's always him. No, you, you, you did something. You walk in the room and he does the boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I know. I, I just laugh and that. gas him up when he keeps but doing that's that's it. He yeah. fucking chair yesterday. I mean, last week. Shut up. Because he's funny. No, you were funny. I thought the chair you made fun of me, too. No, you I like you, I'm a comedian. I'm a laugh and shit. That's not why. God damn. That's not why you fell off the chair. Because it shook the room when she walked in? Yo, you're crazy for even saying that. Taylor, what did I tell you? You're crazy for even saying that. Now, Taylor, Taylor, let me tell you one thing that's about to happen to you now. Let me tell you one thing that's about to happen to you now. Because this is a double-edged sword. Now they see you can fucking play. What sword got one edge? A katana. Oh my god! Like 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 oh, like now they see you can play. I'm now, not playing though. But you but I know see you can play. I know. Like, I know. <laughs> you took years off my life. My life is different. That was violent. I'm a different human being. Why was it violent? Why was it violent? After all the fucking jokes y'all say all the time. Our jokes are jolly. Our jokes are jolly. Yes. Oh, just shut the fuck up. Do you see him? Do you see him? Do you see what I mean? Do you see what he does? Why don't you, why don't you care about my mental health when it comes why to... Why don't you care about her mental health? Mental health. Okay. But listen, can we that have... Listen, 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 let's have the conversation. Ask question. Question. Listen, listen, let's have the conversation. Let's have the conversation. Hey, by the way, just by the way, it's not just you. Because people, will, let you get like, <laughs> people will DM me and they'll be like, bruh. You're the fat friend. I'd be like, what are you talking about? They say like, that about Taylor? No, no, not Taylor. Whoa, <laughs> see? What I told you last week. I told you last week. Don't say that. You, say that. Oh, you, you said, said that. I, I, said, said, I, said, I said, I love this. They give like, a give and go. This Charlotte is great. Charlotte, Charlotte <laughs> loves mental funny. health. But he'll be hard on your fucking mental health, yeah. bro. Like, like, you will be, bro. Oh, yeah. When you walk yeah, in. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here's the thing. Oh, yeah, get out of this one. We all get know. Listen, this one. Yeah. we all know. When you walk he in this room. If you walk in this room. Hands out. If you hands out, you know he's cool. You might be content. Right. You might be fodder for a joke. Did you right. say it, continent? Or, or but y'all are literally just making shit up with me, though. That's my point. I told Taylor last week, Taylor, if you were really fat, we wouldn't make the joke. That's not true because Van been fat. He's a man. Yeah, like, you were right. It's okay to tease fat men. What? Wait a minute. Hold it, on yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Hold on now. <laughs> yes, you should fat shame your, your friends. So, so look, but what yeah. if I told y'all why I got fat again? He knows why I got fat again. Oh, come on shit. now, come on. Why you got it? Come on. Why you blaming on that? He knows not. He knows. He knows. Come on. He knows. He knows why I got fat again. Stop it's on, not like man. these titties no. grow out of nowhere. Like, no. like, he knows why Stop I got fat it. You just doing that. I swear to God. No. no. You, you pulling a Taylor right now. Yeah, Stop it, bro. Come on, bro. You pulling bro. an Ebony, bro. bro. I Stop promise, bro. I'm pulling an Ebony. I swear, bro. Yo, can we talk about snack shaming? <laughs> <laughs> TikTok mom yeah. took her child out of school because she got snack shamed, bro. 
The I thought we got to do a different the topic. The mom, this is going to come back on me in some kind of way. The mom, the mom got upset because the teacher sent the note home to her and said, you need to start feeding your kid healthier options. Oh, uh, you can't do that. What? You can't. The, 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 the teacher can't do that, bro. Why not? It was Pringles. It depends what the snack was. The Pringles. The, nah, the, the Pringles teachers. not unhealthy. Once the you... Stop, the fucking you can't kid. stop. It's a kid, bro. The teacher got to stay out the motherfucking bitch. You got to snack shame young. Yes, how fat That'll is the kid? That'll kid be a it, fat shame later. Nah, come on. That's man. facts, though. What... Did, did, what? Oh, my mom My mom once sent me to school with six pieces of fried chicken. No bullshit. God damn. I, I, that's that's so true. In like a bag? We had a... <laughs> bro, bro, <laughs> yeah, bro, bro, bro. Did you bring the plate? Bro. It was, like, bro. was it like a barbecue? <laughs> was it like barbecue? <laughs> bro, bro. Oh, we, we were going to the... Uh, to the <laughs> 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 Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Bro, bro. I swear, bro. We, no were, way. Going the, we were going to the... We were going to the... To the state capital in Baton Rouge. Field trip to the state capitol. And like, oh, she forgot. I, was like, I didn't get you any lunch, or whatever. All right, cool, cool. Before you go to school, just go do your thing. All right, 20 minutes, she fried us some chicken. I took the chicken. I remember I was the man at the whole school, but it set a bad precedent. Nigga wanted fried chicken for lunch for the rest of his life after that. Oh, fuck. Yeah. You couldn't go back to regular. Couldn't go back to regular. So I so go, like, Mama, what we eating is what we eating today for lunch. And every day, <laughs> every day, she whipped up some different shit. Damn. Other kids was having peanut butter and jelly. I had a full fucking bowl of gumbo, getting in that shit, the I rice, the whole I would say your mom loves you more than them uh, other parents. That's facts. Yeah, yeah she did. My mom never made me lunch, bro. Why not? Why not? Oh, now y'all care. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all care about how I but was no, raised. But no, to me, the teacher shouldn't be getting in the... To, to me, unless the kid, to Alice's point, if the kid is severely overweight, yeah. then that, which I don't know if I don't know the kid, but other than that, stay out people's I th house. I think the teacher was being petty because the mother uh, originally wrote a note telling the teachers they should have healthier options for the kids. So I guess maybe when the teacher looked in the bag and saw that there was Pringles. Like, bitch, what are you talking about? Exactly. Now I, I, I take everything back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the but, teacher started this shit. Teachers, yeah, now the mother started. The mother started. Yeah. Oh, sorry, the mother started yeah. it. I take everything back. Yeah, but the Pringles, can we go, can we, can we go back to some brilliant idiots into some inside stuff? <laughs> okay. Taylor, did text us last week, and she did say there were some things she didn't like. But can I right? just say one thing? The reason I didn't respond is because I thought you were only talking about him because I never say anything about you. <laughs> this is such a lie. I never say Taylor, anything. You know if you actually go Taylor. back and review the tape, I would never say something as evil and vile as you I don't even do nothing. <laughs> I just make sound effects like, a, like Missy yeah. Elliott. What, so, so what is the thing? So Taylor, what do they say? But don't they me. <laughs> no, well, he doesn't look at him sitting back there. First of all, look at all the first of all, he got his little Thanos after the snap. He's just eating a papaya on a random planet. That's Picking it up. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew. See, me and Taylor make jokes about each other being thick because I'm thicker than her. She knows this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you she really gonna it. let him get away with this? Oh, she ain't never said something you. thick is different from you. saying someone's fat. I've never said that about Who you. Said you're fat? You don't have to say the word fat, but insinuating a uh, role and everything else what? like that. Stop. I'm playing. saying you're smart. You got honor roll. <laughs> you're smart. <laughs> it's the honor roll. You know what makes you know what makes this what? podcast hard? Cause I'm usually used to fighting like with my hands. So now I have to actually talk. Because usually I was not the shit out you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The fighting with your words is very effective. Very I told Taylor last week, I said, Taylor, I respect it. I'm going to stop. But I said, you know who not going to stop? I said, you know who can't help themselves? The comedian in the goddamn room. You would throw me under the bus. <laughs> but I know no, you! That is so fucking when he's, when yeah, he's the most started That's, That's why That's you great. wrote the joke. You see what this? You, you, you wrote the joke because Charlemagne <laughs> put it in your brain. No, you let him manipulate no, you. No, no, I, 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 I know I'm protecting you. When I get I protect you. When I get I'm here for you. I love you. God damn, he so is deep. Good for real. He, did, he did a peace treaty with her and it and turned up. So oh, that's wow. crazy. Well, first of all, that's, bro, that's crazy. So devious, bro. Why is that dope? Yo, no, 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 you that's good. super devious, Cracker. bro. <laughs> you crack ass cracker. Bro, bro, that's some cracker you, ass bro, shit. You acting like a cracker. Why is that devious? Like bro, that's some white guy. He's a cracker, bro. I didn't even make no jokes this week. Bro, bro. Yes, you did. Yeah, he's so mad. Nah. And it nah. works. Yo, I, can, I can remember and when it they worked so, so good. crazy. Because as soon as Andrew said listen, anything. Listen, I can remember. <laughs> they were so good last week, I can remember them. Andrew hit you with the, yo, Taylor, it's, 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 uh, I'm, I'm with you through thick and thicker. <laughs> but that's yo, different that. from 
don't know. It's a, it's a word to me. That's his way of getting it. No, he didn't say that. Nah, he said that. Nah, he said that. No, I know he did. He's getting his shit off of you. He thinks his jokes didn't get enough last week. So he's like, all right. They have the podcast on tape. They can rewind the tape. Look, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is my mental health matters too. Me too. I'm saying. What you do to me? I'm with you. And <laughs> I'm now I'm, I'm gonna tell you something about Taylor. Little Taylor, you right? I'm gonna tell you. No, this fucked up. I need to tell her this. Let me tell you something. What you said to me? You know what you said to me? Who? You don't care about my mental health. That shit was cruel. What y'all did to me is not cruel. I've never heard a cruel joke to I've never in my life. Are you serious? Best best episode done at this level. This is the best Y'all episode ever. I know. I've never seen Ooh. 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 Y'all are experts. Ooh. By the way, I didn't, even realize, yeah. I didn't even realize shit. that Taylor felt the way until she told me last week. Oh, Shut what? up. How did you think she so felt? So what? Yeah. The, you think she loved it? You know what I've seen her do? What? I no, stop! Her. No, shut I up! Shut her. up! Because you're about to throw me under the bus for no reason. Why do you do that? Why? No, no, no! Why do you do that? Why do you do that? Stop trying to play against you! No, stop! We're gonna talk about you. We're gonna talk about you. So stop! Stop! No, that's what you're not gonna do. You're not gonna try to make me seem like I'm a bad person. No, what the fuck? You are a bad person, but you a funny motherfucker. But you funny. The way you look at funny. I see the see. I see. I've never seen the nuke let off like that in here. I've seen you let off a nuke before. She walked that up. Wasn't a nuke. She walked up to that a, was a nuke. She walked up to a remote employee. No, no. After she saw the remote employee having a good weekend with oh, Diddy. No. And she walked up to the remote employee and no. she said, So how did it taste? <laughs> and the remote employee goes, How did what taste? Breakfast? Oh, the bagel was pretty good. No, 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 not the bagel. How did it taste? He goes, How did what taste? She said, Diddy's dick. In front of the whole room. Oh, wow. Who- how many nukes you got left? Say- How many nukes you got left, Taylor? Wow. Taylor. How many nukes you got Let's left? Let's also Taylor. understand something. Why? Taylor, wow. why'd you do that? That's crazy. To a man? Why? To a man? This why are you man. ruthless? She hates men, bro. You she hate men. Ruthless. You hate men. <laughs> and I can make an she, argument. You hate men. I can, no, I can not also make do an that. argument that that was low-key homophobic. It was. Why is that homophobic? I, well, I, that's I, I don't know if that's homophobic. Why is that homophobic? She's inquired about the flavor. That's all. That wasn't homophobic. Yeah, that's more of like a dietary joke. Did he though? <laughs> was it hot, heavy on carbs? Like, like yeah. you should just try to get some nutrient that facts. Was a, that was a great what made you think that they fucked Diddy? If you what? met him, what did you throw in there? Why did you throw in there? Rock flavor. Shout out to Diddy, man. Coconut. Shout out to Diddy. Shout out to Diddy. blue I just heard water. I know that he didn't just shout out to Diddy. A black man's dick tastes like watermelon. My people. See what I'm saying? This guy's a crazy crazy person. Sean Man's having the worst 15 minutes. Honestly, it was just a run on joke of when he originally tried to get at me, though. See, then he tried to get at you. Yes, so she clapped at him (laughs) because he tried to holler at her, and she didn't like the way he tried to holler. Yeah, that's it. I thought it was disrespectful. Whoa, disrespectful. How did he holler at you? I had a boyfriend at the time, and I thought he was just being nice and just hanging. Like I was new to New York and everything else, and then. Uh, we hung out. He's like, I know, and I had to leave. And then he's like, I know you're not leaving before I taste it. And I felt type of way about it because we're coworkers at the end of the day. Why do you think I'm about that shit? That's real. And then you asked her if Diddy tastes it. You asked him if this Diddy was much later. This is much later. So he, left. he left. He left. He left. Taylor is Diddy. No, no, don't do that. Nah. No, 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 no. Man, don't let them fucking trick you. Do not let them fucking trick you. I just seen it in action. You over, had that. over over the years <laughs> of them shaking. constantly, constantly. Don't put me in this. I defend you. I'm always there you for you. You do defend me at the same time. You're at the same time. You're at the same time, you just tried to get him to tell me tell a fat joke. That cracker. I did not. What do I no, tell fat joke? I said he just he just tried to get you to do one. Cause he's like, Yo, oh, you I'll missed something. You, you could be mad at me, but don't. That man never said nothing to you. That is a fact. Who? That man has never said a I've single never thing. Said a fat joke Let me to tell you, you something. Are you serious right now? Tell no, I'm dead serious. What is the, the fact, joke? The fact that you would insult that man who has only been nice to you, has only cared about and, you, and, and never you said a single thing. Why are you defending him now? This, this is amazing. Not, uh, this is this is what do you do when I sit down? Yo, are you what do you do when I get up? Hey, hold on, hold on. Are you okay? You go down and pull a chair up. Hey, you're a fucking liar. You don't go to sit down and pull a chair up. 
hate What's crazy Aisha. is Taylor, Taylor on her way home is going to be like, yo, did I go too far? Yeah. No, no, I'm not. Don't get me mad. No, I'm not. You did. Don't get me mad. You did. That's, I've always said I'm a ticking time bomb. Stop playing with me. Ticking time bomb? Yes, stop playing, playing with me. You never said that once on this podcast. Yes, I, if you had said that, stop maybe Stop playing I with Taylor. Not I would say stop playing with Big T, but I don't want her to take it the wrong way. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I hate y'all. Big T, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna keep going. He keep going. He can't help himself. Move on. It's okay. No, it's okay. And you got nothing for him, yo. It's okay. Why are you scared of him? I'm not scared of him. That's my girl. That's my niece. I love Taylor. <laughs> this motherfucker. And she knows that. <laughs> I love Taylor more. <laughs> no, but Sean, I do not like that you get defensive when I'm trying to tell you genuinely what I don't like. Mm. That's a problem for me. Yeah, Charlotte. That's a problem for me, too. No, she's right. Mm. I'm, I don't but like I don't, it and I told her the only reason I got defended because I'm like Taylor, you know I come on what you know I love you like it's nothing like, but I never said that you don't I'm saying I don't like when you do this that's in a serious it. way it makes you feel not great when yeah because when, yeah. then the jokes go on the Reddit and you know memes and all of that and I'm going to the source y'all are the one they're following <laughs> you speak up for a fact <laughs> I'm not no I'm not hey, you okay bro Sorry. talk to us man. what happened what happened bro nah bro hey, what happened nah. bro nah. bro he was like, like I know bro. how I feel don't bring Taylor into your world yeah, I know how I feel I want you bro Taylor is not one of you alright that will not be joining the episode bro 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 he trying to bring Taylor to the into the fall. I hate y'all so much. Bro, it happens, bro. Oh, man, you ain't got no bills to pay, man. That <laughs> shit <laughs> so stupid. I don't know why this podcast oh, even exists. God, I don't know what this podcast about, <laughs> man. Give me the Steve Harvey oh, shit. Man. I start sweating, y'all. This did. shit is I crazy, sweating, man. Bro. Oh, I love man. you, Taylor. I Taylor, you, I love you, and I, love I you, hate, man. I hate. I love you, Alex. I hate <laughs> yeah, I you don't you love too, me the child. way I love you, though. I do love you, but stop playing with me. I don't play with you. That man right there. Y'all both gaslight like me. Taylor's not wrong at all, and the reason I know she's not wrong at all is don't because. Don't do it. No, don't this, you do this it. has been happening to me my don't. whole life. What? Literally. People what pulling is, you to the side and saying you're going to fall. Shit. This has been happening to me hey, my hey, whole yeah. life. Like, like, hey, nigga, chill, yeah. bro. This is not right. new. And that's right. what makes you an asshole. Right. Because yeah. you know this and it's you just don't. It's jokes amongst but it's friends. It's jokes amongst friends, even though I don't make them, but you make them about me. <laughs> I'm going to play the big I'm not making you the big This has literally been happening to me since high school. I mean, I'm middle school. Literally, True. called into the principal's office. Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck. yeah. Leave these people alone. <laughs> <laughs> Which people, though? Which people was All it? All types of everybody. I didn't discriminate. There wasn't in no way, one shape, specific form. brand? No. It really wasn't. <laughs> it really, truly wasn't, yo. Yeah. Yo, do you guys remember when Van tried to just equate what he goes through to what Taylor goes Crazy through? Crazy as hell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they come and after you online. Van's and an expert. Like, yeah, yeah, Van wrote books. This. I mean, yeah, this is like, I wrote a book, book on this whole thing. Called Fat, Big, and Tired. <laughs> Fat, crazy, and tired. Fat, crazy, and tired. You're going, you're Why you have to put two fats in there? Why would it be two fats? Why would it be fat and big, bro? You know what I'm saying? Absolute. Like, why would it be fat and big? You already got fat. Right. You don't need big. Fat, big, and wide as hell. Like, why would it be three? You know what I'm saying? Why, why would it be three? It's just one fat. Well, and fat and crazy. Somebody bring some towels in here, some napkins or something. Yo, you got, Chris got some, bro. I'm not using them wet wipes. <laughs> hey, yo, shoot, can you bring in some uh, paper towel, please? Damn, bro. Let's can, pay the bills, let's man. Let's just pay the bills. <laughs> yep. Elevate you. too crazy right now. <laughs> uh, salute to Unk, man, Steve Harvey. Elevate you. Elevate you, man. Elevate you, Vitality Daily Greens. The new product co-founded by Steve Harvey and formulated by Harvard scientists. This game-changing formula boosts your body's mito mitochondrial production, providing you with sustained energy throughout the day. No more relying on coffee or unhealthy energy drinks to get you going. It's packed with over 30 superfoods, vitamins, and minerals to feel energized, focused, and ready to tackle your day. The key benefits to elevate you 
30 superfoods per serving, nine greens per serving, clinically studied probiotics, contains fruit, vegetables, mushroom blend, enzymes to aid digestion, zero grams added sugar, vegan, gluten-free, 15 calories per serving, cost you only $1.50 per day. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. Thank you, if, thank you, Taylor. <laughs> if you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund <laughs> your full purchase price, okay? Uh, I know how hard it is to stay on top of your health and nutrition game. Some Sometimes it feels like there just aren't enough hours in the day to get everything done. But with Elevate You, you don't have to worry about that anymore, okay? This stuff is packed with all the nutrients and vitamins you need to keep your body running like a well-oiled machine. And the best part, it's super easy to use. Just mix a scoop into your water or juice and you're good to go. And it comes in three delicious flavors, chocolate, tart cherry, and original greens. And check this out. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your full purchase price. Take control of your health today and experience Experience more daily energy with Elevate You Vitality Daily Greens. Go to ElevateYou.com, L-E-V-A-T-E-Y-O-U.com, and use promo code IDIOTS for 15% off your first purchase. Let's get back to the show. Do we have church announcements, gang? What you got, Schultz? Yeah, um, uh, shows coming up, man. Um, Phoenix, I'm going to see you in a... I think Phoenix is... Uh, yeah, yo, thank you, Phoenix, so much for selling out the weekend, man. We're going to be out there. And then we got... Um, uh, we added another show in Reno... Uh, Temecula, we're coming out there. You guys saw that one out, man. Gary, Indiana, you guys saw that one out, man. It, it, uh Calgary, we're going to be coming there as well. And uh, yeah, theandrewshows.com, we're going to be adding some more dates. So we're getting back out on the road. I can't wait. And thank you guys for being so receptive to that and spreading the word. So that really means a lot to me. Theandrewshows.com. You got any church announcements, man? Uh, no. <clears throat> Shit coming up. TV stuff with when the Ryan strike gets figured out. But now nah, I'm just doing my same thing. Ringer. Ringerverse, higher learning, come fuck with me. Yeah, man. Uh, just go pick up some of the 85. Uh, that's that's the project we put out on SPH Productions. Go pick up Finding Tamika. Of course you can, Chris. It's your project. Uh, next Tuesday night, <sighs> Philadelphia, Brotherly Grub Cafe, 6 to 9. I'm participating in a town hall uh, about brotherly love. Mike Africa Jr. will be there. A lot of notable Philadelphians will be there. No, who's hosting it? Uh, maybe me, maybe Baba Renfro, who is one of the characters okay. or people in the in the doc. So that'll be next Tuesday night. So y'all be having a discussion about some of eighty five. Yep, town hall meeting. Oh, that's dope, man. That's yeah, go go pull up to that. Uh, make sure you get finding Tamika. And I shit, I don't even know if I should tell y'all I'm hosting the Daily Show on May fifteenth because I don't even fucking know if that's happening. As of now, it don't look like it. They shut down. Yeah, yeah all the late night shows did, but uh, John Stewart <clears throat> was around um, for the original. Uh, back in the day when they had the other writers crack in 07 and he somehow got back on the air I don't know if he came out of pocket he not, he just he just wrote it all himself he wrote it himself I don't, I don't yeah. remember but isn't he also a part of the writers guild uh, which is oh, okay. quite interesting because I guess the most effective way I, we gotta ask John about that but the most effective way to get the writers what they want would be for the shows to be shut down yeah so that is Oh, the of, shows are shut down. Oh, no, they're in solid. They're doing it in solidarity with. Remember, like the last time. No, I'm saying back when John did it. So maybe he was paying his whole staff to to take off, but he was still writing it himself. I don't or remember. I, and by the way, I don't. I, oh, I, I, I don't remember. I don't remember yeah, seeing this. I just. I've, I've been told this over the past few uh, days that that John was on. No, I remember him being on 100. Yeah, percent And yeah, it just yeah. showed like his genius because he could do it by himself. Yeah. But. Uh, it is peculiar to me because it seems like it's something that John would absolutely support. Like that marginalizes the staff in a way. It make, or, make, or makes them seem like they're not as needed. Yeah. yeah. It's just, and the way that you become effective, I think, is having the network just shut down. I think he still had his writers with him. I think he was paying them out of pocket. I don't know how that shit was working. Most of, most of the guys are probably going to pay through it that can do that. Different people did different ways. Remember, they David grew their Letterman, beard out. I think, paid yeah, out, right? Yeah, they could, they could do it. I think, look, I mean, look, listen, John is a fucking moral, yeah, wise, yeah, like, virtuous absolutely. guy, so I'm sure that there is a good reason Whatever for Whatever win-wins makes sense. Yeah. You know what? You know what? Just Something just came across. I'm worried about Jamie, man. Jamie, Jamie. Fox. Yeah, because oh everybody's God, talking like, yeah, everybody's like, pray for Fox, and then I read the day that uh, he's been in the hospital for three weeks. You know? Yeah. Apparently he had like a stroke. Yeah. But like, it, it just... Too close to home, man. Yeah, my guy Artemis Gordon, Sleuth Artemis Gordon, he put up a great post yesterday and he was just like, you know, at what point, I'm, I'm paraphrasing him, but he was like, at what point are we just going to start celebrating people when they're here? Facts. You know what I'm saying? And then he had a picture of Jamie up and he was like, you know, 
Yeah, I pray for Jamie. It's like I don't, I don't, I don't think feel, I don't think Jamie is one of these guys that yeah. has been forgotten. I think Jamie is commonly brought up as the most talented human being alive in entertainment, in, in terms of somebody who could sing, somebody who can act, somebody who can do comedy, someone who can do impression, like. He's one of the most talented human beings ever. I don't think I, 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 he is, but I don't think we know how to celebrate people anymore. I, I, I don't think we know how to revere people anymore. I think that the society that we're in is conditioned to slander. And the bigger you are, the bigger you are, the more ripe you are for slander. What I will say is, I, I don't know that there's been as much Jamie Foxx slander. Number one, it's because he's just the sweetest guy. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have very many enemies. And he kind of keeps his private life as private as you can, right. you know what I mean? So I haven't heard as much slander about him. Normally when Jamie Foxx's name comes up, you only hear good things around it. And yeah. I, you know, and we, we need to celebrate people more while they're here. And I think that comes in the form of support, support for what people are doing, support for what they're putting out there. That's how you celebrate someone. But it's not human nature Every day to think about how great somebody else slander. is. Slander, though. No, no, no. It's not. slander. Yo, the only way we, the only place that we do it where we're comfortable doing it is sports. Every day we, we don't even do it there. Not every, really. In, in the every day somebody's trying to say Jordan wasn't the greatest or LeBron wasn't the greatest. But, but, but relitigating their their, their worst whole, failures yeah. every no single doubt, day. No doubt. But regardless of what that conversation is, we're still saying somebody's great. Whether you think LeBron is great or you think Michael's great, we're not afraid to celebrate them. Slander <laughs> is the price you pay for success. That is a fact. And that is a price that you have to be willing to pay and you have to understand that part of success is quieting that slander and continue to put out greatness nonstop until those people that slander you look foolish. That's yeah. because there, there will never be a time where people stop slandering you, but there will be a time where other people go, nah, you just hating, bro. That man or that woman is doing something fire. The, it, as a when human, the last time something went viral for something good? Like when the last time somebody said, "Yo, this shit is so good, everybody got to check it out." Every single day we post all the both time. Yeah, viral. Tell like, like you talking about, like, literally like, every single day show, we post. Like, tell a, me a, one. A show goes viral, like you gotta watch this. Bro, or, I post or, like, a stand-up clip and it goes viral pretty much every single it time. All the time. What's the last? Tell me. The little girl that that be the little. Uh, you, you see the little girl Van Van from Florida that be rapping. Everybody loves the way she raps. You know who that is. Girl. Anyway, I posted it. Things go viral. For, people go viral for good Not stuff. Not like all negativity. The time. Tell me the last time something went negative. You, you could use Harden as an example. Hold on. Tell me the last time somebody got slandered on social media <laughs> yes. and it went crazy viral. People get slandered. I mean, Anthony K. Williams, we look, started the show off. It's, it's not slander. That's not slander. <laughs> that's not slander. So, oh. so check it out. Check Le out. LeBron when coming through your, in the playoffs, but that's when sports. When you're on the way up, right, you remind people of who they are. Mm -hmm. and their aspirations. So it's very exciting to root for you when you're going against the world. You're everybody's favorite new DJ. You're everybody's favorite morning radio That's host right. when you're on the way up because they, you, they're reminding of, of who they are. They wanna be that morning guy. They wanna do something. When you get to the top, some people you remind them of what they're not. So what they have to do to be okay inside is diminish your greatness Absolutely. to make them feel okay. And that's a human thing that we all do. We are all guilty of this. This is a thing that just happens. And it's our job when we're on top to be as undeniable as possible. I don't think we do that, yo. What's that? So, so Not us, personally. I, we're always celebrating somebody. I, I've tried my hardest to celebrate, but yeah. I know I am also guilty of the human instinct to find things that the greatest people in the world are doing and nitpick at them. And I, that is, I think, a natural human thing. That's why I don't wanna be like, oh, these people are just haters. They're human beings, man, and this is what we do. And now we have platforms where you can get attention for those negative opinions. No, that. The reason why TMZ works is because it feeds a bloodlust that society at large has to bring celebrities down a peg or back to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you see people that everything looks perfect, a hair is not out of place, they're on boats that you can't go on. See when they things happen to them like a DUI or when like they're yeah. cheating on somebody yeah. or when they, they go, fuck it. They're not so special. they actually just like we are. Yep. Like they're, I, yep. the, they're the same way that we are. And so when I was around the office, I would look at the stories that, that, we would, that we would do and it would be like, oh, this person went to this place and did all of this stuff and then didn't leave a tip. And I'd be like, well, why is that news? Like people do that all the time. Yep. Like, well, this person is a celebrity. So when you see them well, do something like that, bro. 
Shut the fuck up, nigga. <laughs> like, with, like, with, like, with, like, like, yes, you're right. When you, when, like, when you, when you see that, yes. people go, oh, okay, well, these people are fucked up too. And then it does something else that nobody ever agreed with me about. It makes you feel okay for not being them. Yes. Because you because yeah, because it. you would then say I get it. I would never want to be that if it means I had to do this yeah, but or be this way. I, you're right, but that's bullshit when people say that cuz people use that to justify their own like failures, right? Yeah, they, but, they'd be like, yeah. "Oh, he, he sucks dick. Oh, he's in the Illuminati. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. you know, you know, you know he had he had to kill seven gerbils and yes. sacrifice yeah. uh, a, 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 sure. a, a Think about that. Think about we got to we got to a point with the narrative to where somebody close to a celebrity would die, and everybody would be like, blood sacrifice. sacrifice. Oh my God. I'm like, God, damn. Yeah, come on, you know man. What I mean? It's like, easier to believe that than to believe that we're not there because of the things that we've done in our life. Or the choices that you've made. Exactly. Yeah, so it, that, that's kind of the way that that and, goes. And the reality is that like, if you're in entertainment, you're gonna fail, you're gonna do something cringy, you're gonna do something not funny, you're gonna do something bad constantly. You're, you're putting out content for hours a week. There's tons of it. There's tons of opportunities to be like, oh, look at fucking yeah. Charlotte, or look at fucking Schultz doing that shit, or look at Van doing that shit. There's mm-hmm. tons of it, and that's the price you pay once you get to a certain point. Now, the, the question is, is, is that a human thing? I think I it is. I don't think it is, yo. I don't, my, my nature is not to hate. Like, I, lo- I really love greatness. And I love celebrating people, and I think that y'all do too. We before the oh, that, podcast started, we literally was in here yeah. talking about how funny Dave's show is. And then you started talking about the, the redhead. The, the Andrew Santino, Andrew Santino. so you, funny. I, 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 mean, if, I'm being all the way, if, if I'm being all the way real, though, I would say that a lot of the appeal to you that people had mm-hmm. was that you would say stuff. and Nobody else would say. No one else would say. And some of those opinions, bro, were mm-hmm. about, they were negative opinions about people. You'd have to, you'd have to be honest with that. Like if, it depends. Like for example, like you talk about stuff going viral. You know what went viral for the Breakfast Club? What? It's, it's been a bunch of motherfuckers that have come to the Breakfast Club Rats. and they have rapped. And you be oh, oh, you, <laughs> that you, you, ain't it, bro. Like that ain't <laughs> it. That ain't that it. That was a, that was the whole thing. That's I'm not, not negative though. <laughs> nigga. That's somebody rapping and me giving them their opinion in their face. Negative to me would be he raps, I act like I like it, and then I tell everybody else that nigga is terrible as a rapper. But do you yeah, understand what sucks. I'm saying, though? But there's ways that, you could have done it, though. All I said was, nah, man. Come I didn't even say that's whack. I didn't even say you suck. You said that ain't it, I which said, is nah, the worst thing you could yeah. say. Yeah, bro. That's the and best. No, that just means go do another one. <laughs> Charlotte, can you stop? No. You know what you're doing. If somebody gets on stage and does stand up, right? And you say, man, that motherfucker sucks. To me, that means tell he needs to quit. It's over. But if you say, that ain't it, man. Can, you know what I'm saying? Can you, can some, you, can do a, you can do a little better. There, there was a time that... You didn't say that. That's, that's, not, that's not what I, I, You can do a little better. Stop that. I'm Cap also, but, I, but you know what nobody ever remembers? I also told Safari I thought he had a hit record. People forget that. Yeah. I, first, first of all, I'm not just talking about Safari. I'm talking about Safari, Machine Gun Kelly. I'm talking about uh, uh, Lakeith Stans. I'm Gee. talking about... Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's just going on right now. Have you ever... Have you ever <laughs> let, let me ask y'all a question. Were any of those raps good? Uh, I mean, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I mean, shout out to Lakeith. And what are we doing? Like, no, 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 no. You know who the most <laughs> negative people ever in the world are? Who? Sports pundits. They can be negative sometimes. I don't think so. I just think they're giving critical no, by, by the way, I, By the way, I'm not necessarily saying that you're being negative. What I'm saying is that saying if you if if your nature was to celebrate oh, oh. in every time, yeah. you might have found a different way to oh, frame. Oh, oh, oh. So, so, there's so, no reason to celebrate that. No, no, but <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's let's create this little caveat. Um, saying that something is negative is not wrong. There are tons of things of that are negative. Uh, a hyper focus on only the negative, which is Bomb. which is not necessarily yes. what you're doing. Yes. A hyper focus on only the negative is a more common practice by by people, and I think that's why when people reach a certain level of success, they kind of hide in ideological support because being a unique thinker in a space where everybody's trying to tear you down and point out what you're doing wrong is very exhausting. Yes. If you go, you know what? I'm actually just a Christian guy and I have to live by all my Christian values and that is the number one thing that I'm gonna do, then the Christian's got your back as long as you keep it Christian. That is human though. And 100% because yeah. we wanna be safe, right? We right. want the group to accept us. Right. And then you can do see the same thing with uh, political ideology, you see the same thing with- uh, the identity. 
any identity, but you lean, and, and people in Hollywood do the same thing. They're yeah. like, listen, this is how I make my money. Mm -hmm. I need to have this ideological support. I believe what Hollywood believes because I wanna send my kids to school and I wanna keep on doing this in my career. And I think that's what happens. And I think the people that don't do that, I don't think that you do that. I think you'll say some wild shit. You'll come on here and be like, I'm not a Democrat. That's a that's a fucking heavy thing to say for a person of your influence. Why? No, come on. I'm not a Democrat. I, listen, I mean, listen, I'm, not, I'm not a Democrat. Word. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. It, it, We're winning, guys. Oh, shut <laughs> up. No, 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 no. Like I'm saying, I'm not a Democrat. Well, well, I'm a Republican. It, it, well, no, what I mean I'm just is not a what I mean is Republican. But what, I, what I'm saying but, is, but you, and I'm, and I, the, the, the was, way I, I, was I cl not to cut you off, but was I clear about what I was yeah, trying to say? Yeah, and so, and so, what I'll say is, is you're opening yourself up for criticism from both sides when you're not just going, "Hey, I agree with all these ideologies," and I really admire that, and that's something that I look up to. I think that's something you looked up to. I know it's something you looked up. We try to be it, but the cost of that is Oof. that we're open for criticism from everywhere because we don't have that one group protecting it except the people that really ride for us. And that's why the people that ride for you when you have success are the realest out there right, yeah. because they're not riding because you're echoing beliefs they already have. They're riding for you because they, they really truly believe. believe in you. Yeah. And that's why it's like, I'm, if anybody holds me down from, from back then till now or even now, I'm like the most fucking grateful because it's so easy to fall in that right. trap of uh, nah, I'm, just, I'm just trying to hold the prince of people pissing people off accountable over here. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know that's that, that's all I'm trying. But this is why I'm saying performative. I, I, I know, and, and that's the other thing that nobody ever wants to talk about. How 95 percent of these opinions we have about people are performative. That's why I don't think it's natural. What, what do you think, I think people, people are doing on social media? They're performing. performing. Yeah. I don't have a point. So, so that, that I don't think that's nature. I think it's actually more natural to celebrate people. But you know what happens when you do? Oh, uh, yo, stop dick riding. I, you know, yo. you know, well, dick riding. Yo. So, Why you on that man dick? So, I love, I love celebrating. I, I love celebrating too. What I think is, when we're, anytime that you say something that people want to say but they're not saying, you automatically become their mascot, no matter what it is. You yeah. can OD on that though. You can. I've done that. I did that with you, Drake. You, and you, those, you, those, you those, can, I had, those, I had an actual opinion about Drake when he first came out. Right. And then when I saw like, oh, this shit goes. Like, people like when I fuck with Drake. You OD. Bruh, mm. after the, bruh, you after, know what I'm saying? And like, those people don't really fuck with you. They fuck with the person that is the mouthpiece for their opinion. Once you change your opinion and they don't like it no more, they will come you're back dead you. to And, and by the way, to, to your point, mm. um, no, I, I, I tell you this, and I tell you why it's always better to always do this in your heart. When those Drake ghost reference tracks came across my desk, right? Because people thought I hated Drake that much. Yeah. That if I give this to him, he's going to go crazy yeah, with it. Yeah, touch it. I'm yeah, like, yeah, fuck with it. I ain't trying to ruin this man's career or yeah. life. I don't hate him like that, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And rest in peace, Jazz Fly. You know, t I've told y'all this story. He told Jazz Fly, yo, and I didn't even know her and Drake was cool. Just telling Jazz Fly, like, yo, this is, this is how I feel about yeah. the situation, blah, blah, blah. So then she reached out and let him know what was going on. But my point with all of that is, if I really was a hater, and I really didn't like him in that way, I would have ran with those reference tracks. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of this stuff is broad too, because there's a way to be effective in what it is that you're criticizing, right? Mm -hmm. If, and I learned this at TMZ, I remember back at TMZ, it's gonna sound stupid, but I really learned a lesson here. Back at TMZ, um, I was, when I was really a porn addict as much as I ever watched it, I realized that there was this one porn star, she was white, that I liked, that she didn't do scenes with black guys, right? Can you admit that you liked the white porn star? I did. You know, I had a, I, I, niggas had a phase, whatever. Who, who, who was it, who was it? I'm not gonna say the name now, because it's like, it's, this, 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 this was what I learned. So, <laughs> so like, I, I, I learned that she didn't do scenes with black guys, so I brought it up on the show, I brought it up on TMZ, Harvey and them were crazy, they didn't know that that was going on, right? And that's, that's, still, and that's still fucked up to me, right? Um, but that was going on so across the board in porn hmm. that there's racism and who they're doing that people is racism. If you mm -hmm. do scenes with everybody else and you go specifically, I won't do a scene with a black man. Get like, in BBC. I, I feel like that's racist. But the point is this: that this might be safety. Word is bullshit. Safety. We have to look safety. into that. Bro, yeah, this is yeah, what I that's learned. This is what I learned. If you want to call out <laughs> the racism in the porn industry, mm. then you call that out and you say that there are certain performers that won't work with people. If you want to make a story then you name one person. Uh, so, so, in any, so in any of these situations, mm. 
kind of what I see is people's incuriousness Absolutely. about the actual issue that's being discussed. It happens yeah. all the time. And their, ability, and their want to actually be seen. Yeah. And the quickest way to be seen that's true. is not to criticize violence in rap. It's to pick one rapper no. and say, this person yeah. is the devil. Now, we, we, we talk about this all the time. And you know, I hate that shit. I hate when somebody goes after the individual and not the issue. Yeah. I hate that shit. But Dude. the individual is the one that's actually making you feel insecure or inferior. You know, and, and that's why you got to respect the motherfucker who's been on the top of the game forever. Like, a dude like Drake, who's been on the top of the game for 15 years, has been getting this treatment for 15 years. A guy like LeBron has been on top of the game for 20 years, has been getting this treatment for 20 years. And they've both acted with incredible decorum when you think about it. Yeah. It is very easy to just want to lash out on everybody. I think LeBron better than Drake. Early on, Drake what? definitely used to let all that shit. Drake go. used to step in it a lot, but he stopped. It's been about ten years yeah, now. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, he has, he has, I mean, maybe, maybe behind years. the scenes he might say some stuff, but in right. public, nah. I'm just saying. To me, that's impressive because it's very easy for those guys to speak out and be justified in the things that they're saying. As far as what? In defending where they are in the game and what they've done. Like what? Yeah. Like, how do you like if, if if for anybody hating on LeBron, he could easily just be like, "Yo, this, look at me. Look at all the things I've, I've been done. on look top at, since I was in the eighth grade. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I haven't gotten in trouble. Nothing has happened. Like you just need to nitpick me. You just need to take me down. You, he could go on that rant, but instead he just goes and knocks out the fucking two seed or whatever the hell it was. But that's because that's that's because people, and notice the narrative shifting. The second he knocks out the two seed, we're all prisoners of the moment, myself mm -hmm. included. You're like. This guy's the truth. Holy but, shit. And he he might be better. And that's what I was talking about earlier because people expect LeBron to be LeBron, but they expect him not to say that he's LeBron. <laughs> I don't think people <laughs> right? expect like, LeBron like be, to be LeBron. But no, people expect LeBron to be excellent on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they expect him not to say that he's excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah, they yeah, expect yeah, him yeah. anytime. If, yeah. if LeBron that's what everybody though, right? Be great, gotta, but don't brag. Gotta, about but don't, be cool. great. Yeah, be, yeah, be great. Yeah, like yeah. if LeBron was to say, look, like Rick James on day, I'm the baddest motherfucker living. Yeah, ain't yeah. nobody ever did it like me. Think about it. I've been on top of. Name somebody else ain't never been in no trouble. Name somebody else ain't never. It, all yeah. of that's true. If he were to say I that, can name one right now. Who? Steph Curry. Steph Curry. The person that nobody wants to hear next to LeBron because it kills so many LeBron arguments. Mm. That's just a whole other debate. Whole other thing. Mm. But but look, Steph. LeBron has been in the spotlight a little bit longer than Steph. Oh yeah, LeBron. And I mean, the expectations what, what, are way higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, 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 what makes LeBron so uh, special is that yo, literally, like y'all said, ESPN magazine front cover. What? What? Ninth grade? What year was he? When it was he, like a junior or a senior. You know what I'm saying? Also, LeBron reminds everybody of what they're not. Steph reminds everybody of what they are. Everybody thinks they could do the shit Steph does. They can't though. No. But they, they cannot. I mean, <laughs> you could argue. No, 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 no. But like, yeah. what, what I'm saying is, his game seems more accessible to people than LeBron. Yeah. You. Can't you can't teach yourself to be 6'9 and handle the ball like a point guard, pass like a point guard, shoot yeah. three. Like, you can't teach that. But you look at Steph and you're like, well, I'm kind of six foot, six two. I kind of got a little range. I got a crossover. You think you can do what he does. Y'all ain't paying attention then. Oh, no, you're talking about arguably, you could say the, the greatest offensive player ever. There's I, an argument I, for that. I, I, think I have the most Steph Curry as number two all the time. Whoa. I'm not, listen, there's a Whoa. there's an argument to be made, man. Number two all time. Steph there's Curry, an argument to be made. Can you, can you run down your, your top? Your Michael, top my, my, my top five, and this is an objective, objective top five, Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Magic Johnson. Interesting. Top five greatest basketball players I've ever seen in order. That's what the group chat said this morning? What group chat? Because you said earlier you didn't watch the game, but you said that was yeah, a, a bad shot. Come on, son. <laughs> he did, he did, Yo, you keep did. doing he this. That's did, bullshit. He did, he did. That's <laughs> bullshit. He did, uh, you nah. need to come to one. <laughs> I see you, you do a callback. You do a callback to something nobody heard or saw because it wasn't on the podcast. Oh, I thought we were recording already. Right. <laughs> That's how I mean, that. <laughs> but no, that's my top. I thought part. we were recorded. Yeah. In order of of the greatest ball players I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, there are times when you watch stuff where you go, I've never seen anything like this before, so you can't get mad That's at it. That's what I'm saying. You can't, get, you can't get mad at it. I think he probably, I think LeBron would probably still have to be ahead of Steph for me just based on the accomplishments. I feel like I've seen LeBron before, though. Who? 
Magic Johnson, Scottie Pippen. LeBron James is the all-time leading scorer in the history of the NBA. So what? So is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. What do I mean? But, I mean... And I hate that stat. That's the stat I hate the most. Because Kareem held that stat for so many years. Nobody and nobody ever nothing. was like, Kareem's the greatest of all. I mean, old people would. Old right, people right, right, would. Right. But we never did that. Because we never thought that we would see anybody break it. So to say that he's, Ma to say that he's Magic Johnson, right? Magic Johnson probably like... 18, 19 points a game, and then the same thing, but he's also the greatest scorer yeah, but Magic of all can do time. everything. LeBron can do everything. That's my point. That's if what Kareem, I said I've seen, that's what I said I've seen. If Kareem I'm was LeBron Christian, before. I think that we he's in the top <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> I think Americans are like, I ain't with all that Jabbar. <laughs> that what the fuck is it? Lou Alcindor? That's it. Big Lou. Big Lou. That's the greatest of all time. And he loved yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> and Kareem was mean, bro. He wasn't fucking with nobody. That's the thing. Like that, Kareem was yeah, like, yeah, he the, was kind of. Yeah. I just never seen anything like Steph Curry, man. I agree. I, I got that. That motherfucker is unbelievable. Okay, greatest offensive players of all time, Jordan. And Steph. it's Steph. It's Steph. Yeah, Jordan. Steph. It's Jordan. Steph. And I'll be honest Wait, with you, if you put Steph ahead of Jordan, just offensively. Nah, you're no, no. Ah, I think there's on, an argument to be made. <clears throat> just offensively, we're not. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not disagreeing. Come right? I've never seen anything like. Wait, 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 no, I, seen, I get it, but the, the is, game so, is stoppable. So we would we would have to the he, game he is dropped, he dropped the light. I know. 50. Look, look, look like the game nothing, the bro. game has changed. The pace of the game has changed. The rules of the game have, have changed. Uh, Steph does one thing better than anybody has ever done it before. Mm. But before we start saying that somebody was a better offensive threat than Magic Johnson, and we talking about just offense, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Oh, excuse me, yeah. um, the, the Michael Jordan. If we just talk about oh, offense, I don't got him over Mike. if we talk about offense, is Shaq in there? If we just yeah. talk about offense, yeah. If, if it's just offense, yeah. You were not, there's nothing you could do with Shaquille O'Neal at a certain point I, in his career. We, we, were, we, we were talking yeah. about game changing players a couple weeks ago, uh, people that we think revolutionized the game of basketball. And I put Shaq in there, but Andrew brought up a good point. Like, there was only one Shaq. Nobody else could do what Shaq does because they didn't have his his size. Yeah, we were talking about like one off changing the way that people play. Like in my in my lifetime, the the people that changed the way that people played, it was Allen Iverson first. Like I literally saw a transition on the courts when I would go play pickup ball. Everybody wanted to be AI. And it was Steph Curry, man. Those were the two biggest changes I saw in basketball. Yeah. What if I what if I could make an argument that the most significant change in basketball was from the paint to the perimeter? And the reason why that change happened is because of Jordan. That the reason why a guy like Kevin Durant or some of the other guys that you see that have that type of size and that type of shooting ability that want to handle the ball at these different sizes, even like a Tracy McGrady who came right after Mike but was still like 6'9", the reason why those guys wanted to be 94-foot players was because Jordan was a guy who could control the game by having the ball in his hand. But Magic, though. And Magic was 6'9", point guard. He had to drop yeah. it to somebody. So so, so, so what I'm saying is, when I'm, and I'm not saying that Magic couldn't score, I'm just saying that like, the way the NBA to me really changed, the game moved to the perimeter because you wanted to be the guy creating the last shot. But that's what our people, our, our top five was Magic, Michael, but Steph, yeah. Allen. There were guys creating that last shot before. I mean, like, Bird would create the last shot. They would, I mean, but like, I'm not saying, but think about it. Jordan won without a dominant post presence. Like, he won with- They're bugging. Jordan, Michael Jordan won championships Dude, without a right, dunk. Bro. He wasn't there. Come on, bro. Like, 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 come on, come on, man. Man. <laughs> Why are you so disrespectful? Bro, but Jordan won without a dominant post press. But look, it's I think as far as the game now, Steph is by far the most influential player. He changed the he didn't just change what how guys would want to play. He changed how teams even when people play. you're right, and even when people are having this conversation about uh whoever wins this this series between the Lakers and Warriors is the man of the generation. That's just not true. Steph Curry is what, 15 and eight, I think, in playoffs against LeBron and three and one in NBA finals? Yeah. What are we talking about? 
I think we're prisoners of the moment, and I think that if LeBron wins this series or the Lakers win this series, we go, LeBron is the fucking GOAT, or a lot of people just say that. And I think if Steph wins this series and they Steph goes on to win the championship, I think people go, yo, Steph's better than LeBron. We're prisoners of the moment. It doesn't mean mm. that it is that way, yeah. but we can't help ourselves from doing that. We see it after every boxing match or every MMA fight. Yeah. We go, that guy's the truth. Nobody could stop him. And that's just our human instinct. We, we have a problem. Awesome. Thank God we're not more rational. No, you're How right. How awesome is it to see something and have it completely change your opinion yep. and then talk to your boys about it for 30 minutes? That's like, not what I do, though. When, when, when we get on the phone and we have these conversations, we always discuss somebody's whole totality. Mm. Because one person isn't. Huh? One person isn't discussing the whole oh, totality. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And that's what that's creates right, that's the right, dialogue. That's right, that's right. You need that's right, one that's irrational right. thinker. That's right. You got to see the whole dick. Because see, sometimes... The head look the, big. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Boom. That's Boom. it. Sometimes you know it's I mean? just a big ass yeah. head. Yeah. But then you, you put got, shit out. It's right there. It's just it's little. shit. What's yeah. the dick it's look like, It's the liberty like, bell. You know what I mean? Shit. The shaft just gone. That's all I'm saying, bro. That's all I'm saying. I tell you what, though. Steph win this championship is going to get hard for a lot of people because he's stepping on a lot of goats now. Yeah. He, 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 he gets a five. You know, do you know why? Say it. Say it. Say it. Why, do you know why they say don't put it. Steph in there now? Say I'm not, it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm like, you know why they don't put Steph in there now? He gets a five. It's going to be tough for him. You know why they don't put him in there now? Colorism. <laughs> they see this little light skinned kid, privileged, Dell Curry's son. They don't want to give it to him. I asked Stephen A that two years ago during COVID. I said, yo, shouldn't we be having a conversation about who was the dom like who was the GOAT of the generation? Was it Steph or Braun? And he said, he said it on Breakfast Club. He was like, I gotta give it to Braun because of the way Steph was raised. You know, what little light skinned kid. Pull, pull it, pull it up. He goes, like little light skinned kid. Nah, bro. Come on, Stephen A. Come on, Stephen A. <laughs> that was uh it was during COVID. It was doing cool. But his, 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 his uh, thought process has changed. I saw him this week saying that he, he's like, yo, we got to start maybe saying Steph's the greatest point guard of all time. Oh, I think he is the greatest point guard of all time. Over Magic? I mean, really. Yes. They play different positions, but yeah, I think he's. I think he the is. way he affects the game, it's. I think he Magic's is. more of a traditional point guard. Though. Traditional point guard. Yeah, in, and non traditional in that he's 6'9. His impact was as big. Who, Magic's? Yeah. Yeah. Big guys weren't allowed to handle the rock. They weren't allowed to bring it up. Oh, no, they his impact the on the game, you're saying. Right. Uh, yeah. And I, Steph's impact is as big, when too. When I meant impact on the game, I meant, like, the literal game he's playing. Like, the way that Steph creates absolute nightmare problems for teams defensively. It's, like, yeah. it's insane with this I just guy. look and see how many sons you got. Now Steph got sons and daughters. And daughters, yep. <laughs> You know what yeah. I'm saying? Magic got sons. Jordan got sons. You know? That's, that's what I look at. I, I got sons. Yeah, I got sons. He don't got no. He don't have no ring. That he got sons. Everybody was trying to be Iverson though. Man, oh, yeah, Iverson had it. Dressing like Iverson. Everybody was trying to be Iverson. Mm -hmm. Did y'all see Royal Woods White House Correspondence Dinner? Yes, sir. What y'all think? I thought he. First of all, Roy is phenomenal. We had him on Flagrant talking about that whole experience. They didn't edit any of his jokes, by the way. Interesting. It was live. They couldn't have any of it. Well, usually you give a transcript because oh, gotta go got you, got you, got you, got you. But uh, but no, I thought he did a great job, man. I think that like. I thought it was really, I thought it was cool shouting out his mom at the end and shouting out his dad and kind of bringing that whole experience. He told the funniest story. I was like, so what did your mom say afterwards? And it was like, oh, nah, she left. I go, what? He goes, uh, she had a Diana Ross concert to get to. Hell yeah. I was like, she didn't just stay there to like be like, that was an awesome job. He goes, Diana, don't wait. Real black right. shit. <laughs> yeah. What'd I you thought, think? I thought it was awesome to see him up there, bro. Like he, he's funny as hell to me. And he's like, the best comics to me are relatable comics. Yeah. Comics that aren't talking over you and they're talking to you. Yeah. So it was good to see him up there. And it says a lot about his star power, so I don't even know why Comedy Central is BSing. Yeah. When, when the next host of the Daily Show yeah. should be. Like, it's like if Roy Wood Jr. is a big enough star to do the White House Correspondence Dinner, then why can't what do you wait he for? host the Daily Show? Yeah, what are you waiting like, for? He had a couple great fucking jokes, man. That NFT joke God, was good. phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he had the other one that I the the Dominion voting booth show. If if you want to know what his stand up is like, his stand up is most similar to his Dominion voting booth joke. Mm -hmm. The other stuff, the more like kind of uh, the way that he described like the roasty stuff, is not exactly kind of his style of stand up. But that Dominion voting booth thing, like my seven hundred fifty six million, my favorite voting booth is Dominion. <laughs> 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 like if you want the truth, 
the, the menu voting booth. Are y'all ready to admit that AI is going to ruin the world? Nah, nah. We're good on AI. You good? Yeah, AI's fine. You Don't worry like about Java it. Rant saying they're good in the West. <laughs> That's exactly Fuck. what you saying. Famous, <laughs> famous last word. Famous last word. The whole fucking thing came apart. What makes you so sure? Because I'm scared of shit. Did you see the guy from Google who stepped down? He's old, bro. Because he said that he wants to tell the world about the dangers of artificial <laughs> intelligence. He's old, bro. Can, but can good. I tell you why That's I'm scared good. though? Because Hawking predicted this. Like it, it, it was. What is Hawking? Stephen, Stephen Hawking. But Stephen Hawking oh. was AI for the last. 20 years of his life. <laughs> Why is he upset at AI? Like, the only way he could communicate is AI. <laughs> but you never saw Stephen Hawking sing happy birthday. You never saw that. <laughs> Black happy birthday at that. You never said, happy birthday. Bro, say y'all niggas. <laughs> 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 what did he say though, man? <laughs> you all could have been prevented if you just told us what he said. Yeah, five say seconds he talked ago. about it in his voice. He talk, no, don't disrespect <laughs> my man. He talked about the dangers of AI. He, he had a couple of different things that he thought were a threat to uh, humanity. AI, it was um, aliens, it was climate. All that so, shit coming at once. So, you, you know, a hit, couple bro. of people have, have, have looked at this. Elon Musk, <clears throat> I'm not a huge Elon Musk fan, but he's been disseminating emails. I had a uh, homeboy of mine that worked at Tesla and Elon Musk was disseminating emails about this like back in 2014 and stuff like that. Scroll down. There's one thing that this dude said. Uh... But I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm kind of agnostic on it. I, I don't have like a, a real, I don't know much about it. Yeah. But when people say, because I know mad people that say it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, and right. when they say it's not that big of a deal, I just like, I, I want to like. It's a big deal. A lot of people lose jobs and it's going to be a huge transition technologically for us. I just don't have that same fear of it destroying humanity. Misinformation. We're not going to know the difference between reality and fantasy. The lines are already Do blurred. we know now? I know That's my point. The lines yeah. are already blurred right now, but now they're about to be obliterated. Okay. Like it's going to be, like, um, like imagine... Like this morning, they said uh, the Ukraine tried to do a hit on Putin, I mean, Putin right? Yeah. yeah. By drone. Yeah. Imagine if you hear Putin's voice saying, "I'm retaliating with a nuclear weapon." Bro, there's oh, a, you don't even have time. You don't even have time there, to think but about the, shit But like you, that. you would think that the that the government would be able to yeah. authenticate whether or not that's a valid. They can't threat. authenticate none of this shit now, Chris. Come on, jump on, Chris. Yeah, well, I mean, in that article specifically, the thing that scared me is the guy compared himself to Oppenheimer, right? And Oppenheimer is the creator of the nuclear bomb, and he put himself in the same category where we unleash these things because we're scientists, and when we see something interesting, we can't help ourselves. But at a certain point, it's out of our hands, and he's like, the AI is now out of our hands the way the nuclear bomb was that's right. in that time, and that's, you know, that's the ultimate way that this can impact us. And next year during a presidential yeah, but there's election? There's more thought, safety now than there ever been in no, history because not, of not nuclear bombs. No, but less oh. people have died in wars yeah. because then, of nuclear bombs. The last two elections, we had so much misinformation. You disagree with that, Chris? More people, less people have died as a deterrent is what you're saying? Yeah. There's been a... It's hard to disagree with that. It's unequivocal fact. There's been far less actual... Have, have, you think the U.S., full -scale you think America and the Soviets would have fought in the 50s well, okay, if it so, wasn't for nuclear of arms? Of course. So yes. you could make an argument that there's been blood spilled in proxy wars, That's, Vietnam. Yeah. That is true. Things like, yes. things like that, Nicaragua, Afghanistan. But like... There would have been probably to this point a major multi-theater oh. world war oh, had there not been mutually assured destruction. Without a doubt. It, it, you could yeah. argue it, it is the greatest invention for peace in history. Shit. I can't, that's I can't a tough go there. AI, I can't go there. That's, a, like, that's such an interesting... It sounds crazy, but in terms of one specific thing... As long as it... Until it doesn't work. Until it doesn't work. And then it's destruction. It's right. You know that guy, yeah. Dr. Hinton, he said that too. He said the problem is going to be war and rumors of war. Right. He said that in the article. He was like, because of the fact that you can just mimic world leaders like it's nothing. I read a I read a uh, interesting story the other day. There was a a Russian uh, general or something like that that received an alert that this is during the uh, the missile crisis yeah. or whatever that America had sent nukes over to Russia, and he has twenty minutes until impact, and this is years ago, and. He's receiving this information and he's the one, he's got the nuclear codes and he's the one that can make the decision that makes it so none of us are here right now doing this podcast. Because if they launch, then we're gonna really launch and then it's over. And 
he sat there for X amount of minutes. I'm forgetting this guy's fucking name. And he he did say, he was like, it didn't feel right. And based on intuition, he's like, I can't launch. I don't think this is right. That man saved humanity. So, and nobody even talks so, about so, this guy because he's fucking Russian. So, so that man saved humanity. So think bro. about the climate that we're in right now where every day there's fear mongering going on, yeah. you know, between nations. If you was to hear something like that right now, would it shock you? If, if right now we started getting alerts, yo, Russia's sending a nuke over here. Would we all be sitting here like, nah, that shit ain't happening? Or would you be thinking like, oh, this shit could potentially happen? Well, you would be scared. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. you, but the first thing I would do is try to figure out where that's where that's coming from. Yeah. You don't have time. But so this is my well, number one, it, it don't matter what we think about the nukes coming. It's not a motherfucking thing we can do about the nukes coming unless you got a bunker. When if the nukes are if the birds are flying, it's now it's about yeah. different levels of damage uh, that that are gonna happen. So like, there's if a, what would you do? I mean, just not, go to your family I mean, well, and be with your loved ones. Like Twenty minutes. Well, 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 first of all, you call them. You're, not, you're never going to know. Like you're not going to know that those birds are in the sky. This is what I would say about AI. To me, the applications of AI are probably the most important thing because, like, some of the stories that you hear, like they have the Seinfeld AI that runs all the time, right? Mm. The people in, in the room that like animated Seinfeld people, and it ran long enough to where the people started to question their existence inside of the room. They started to go, what, what are we doing here? Are we alive? Like the AI people, they started to ask questions like, oh, do we exist? Well, what is existence? Oh, but and, he and, said and, that too. He, he, he said the AI is already getting smarter than and us. And so when you start to see the computer question its own sentience, then you start to wonder, okay, well, what are we using it for? Like in a situation like you just described, what if we, what if we turn over either strategic air defense, flying planes, or anything like that to the AI, then the AI does not have any feel for humanity. It, it just, just calculates the odds, most... and then it goes. Cold decision. It's a cold decision. That guy was like, you know what? He, 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 my duty to my nation might be to launch, but yeah. if I launch, my kids are dead. Yeah. I'm dead. So let me make sure that everybody right. has to die. Yeah. So that's the only question I have so about- So what happens when it's not a message, but it's, you actually hear the president's voice? Are you hear a world leader's voice 100%. saying we just sent terrifying. You got to confirm it. Can I read a, a quote from uh, Bertrand Russell Please. comparing the deterrent aspect of nuclear war to a man walking on a tightrope? And he read it in a specific accent. Is there an accent oh. that you'd like to read it in? I'm going to read it in my natural accent, which okay. is this right here. Uh, and this is from the 50s. What you going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do now? All right. <laughs> Can you just read it in honky tonk accent? That's all we're asking. Southern I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it straight. Accent. Whatever effects you guys put on it afterwards, okay. that's out okay. of my hands. Great. All right. Uh, you may reasonably expect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're serious. We're being serious. We're being serious. We're being serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me read it, Chris. Let me read it. No, let me read Chris, it. no Chris, read it. Let Chris, read it. Chris right, got right. the more serious voice. Go, right, ahead. go, go. <laughs> you may reasonably expect a man to walk a tightrope safely for 10 minutes. It would be unreasonable to do so without an accident for 200 years. Damn. And that's what we're basically betting on. There's not going to be an accident. It's impossible for there not to be an accident. The accident is going to be AI in all likelihood. We're trusting humans to do the right thing. A tightrope. Like, come on. So, okay, cool. We're so, 10 minutes in right now. So, it's scary, That's it's it. bad. What's the solution? I don't think there is none. Well, I mean, there's got to be a solution. I mean, unplug it. But don't nobody <laughs> seem to want to do that. So, it, uh, we have, just to let you know, we have been trying to get somebody, like a computer scientist or someone from one of these various think tanks to come on the show and, like, talk to us about this. And they're very sketchy and hesitant to do it. It's, a, it's something that a lot of pe people want to stay out of. And we've heard a couple of, like, let's wait and see five, six months about it. I just don't know what, I don't know enough about it to be scared. I'm, I'm, of course I'm scared. I don't know enough about it to be like, it's a big, huge deal. But it seems to be something that's kind of just running rampant and nobody really knows how to put the, the yeah. horse back I in mean, the barn. I mean, look at this dude. What's his name, Dr. Hinton, Chris? Yeah. He had, to, he had to quit Google just to be able to ring the alarm. Think about that. He had to quit Google to be able to ring the alarm about the dangers of artificial intelligence. Well, I, I did you this know. History Channel show and the people were asking me something and they were asking me about me. And, they were, and I was like, how do you know that? And they were like, well, we just put you in ChatGPT. And ChatGPT gave us your whole shit. You know what chat rhymes with? 
Shut Listen, what are you about to say? <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, uh, I gotta give saying, credit with that. That, that was kind of what, what did it say? What would Chat GPT say? Chat GPT was, it was talking like me. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. It was like, so we're with the, so the History Channel show is about uh, disruptors. It'll be out like next year. It was talking like me. It was, um, it was, Using my even like in places where I don't talk and like like not not where I don't talk, but places where I stutter or fuck up or things that I would say. This was, is audio that's coming out of it, or no, this is it was written. it was text, and it was gotcha. saying it was because when I when I podcast, I mentioned that I'm from Baton Rouge like a lot. It's mm-hmm. something I do. It had that all throughout the. I had never heard of ChatGPT before. Wow, I had never heard so, of. it So before. imagine what happens when you hear a conversation between two people you love, right? Like, let, let, let's say it's me and Andrew talking shit about, about to try you. It. Oh, We're talking God. real shit about you. Like, you have to put something from you in there, though, so it can don't copy do that. Don't, your I, don't, I mean, you're already in there, probably. So but you imagine, can... imagine hearing a conversation between two people you love talking crazy shit about you, and you're about to see them people in 10, 15 minutes. I just wouldn't believe it unless, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't, I would do a little bit more investigation into it. I, I just feel, feel what you're saying now. I feel that, well, um, there's always invention, and then people get scared about this invention because we don't know what to expect, and then we adapt and we deal with it. No, this is like different. the start of the internet, people are like, oh, this is the end of this all mom and pop man. stores and all that stuff, and then we adapt, and now we have online businesses. This is different. Like, it, this it's is not different. Y2K. People are like, oh, the end of the world. The fucking computers aren't going to know how to say zero, zero, or man. shit like that. Like, this is, it's this really is re- not. This is really playing with our reality, man. Technology just is something new. We adapt, and then we just keep moving on. Like it's always been that way. And always. I, like this, this number five, the widening socioeconomic inequality as a result of AI. When motherfuckers start losing jobs to these artificial intelligence, we're not even gonna know who to be mad at. Motherfuckers just gonna be out here broke, starving, and angry at the world. But that's been happening. Like not, so many not, jobs not have got level. technology. So many definitely. jobs have gotten rep, uh, replaced, replaced already because of technology, and we've adapted. Fifty million jobs, two hundred million jobs. Just devil's advocate. Everything that is being said is correct, but is there not a breaking point? Like, so what I would say is automation, globalization, all of these things that like we've discussed yeah. before. How they is there a breaking point though? Is there a breaking point to where there start there starts to be a compounding of things to where people can no longer function and live their lives in the way that they want to? So if it's it's one thing if the jobs are moving from to overseas, it's one thing if. Uh, whatever it's then it's another thing now plus all of this then there's automation then there's somebody else it'll be the climate that'll be the the breaking point I think it's a combination of all three I think it's climate I think it's AI and what was the, it was something else we said in here earlier we named all three it was climate AI what's that answer man just enjoy you, life while you're here what <laughs> we're, we're gonna adapt just ignore like, all let's shit. say if uh, we're not gonna let's adapt so, Alex let's say if technology takes away all the jobs will probably introduce a universal uh, income. Basic income. Basic yeah. income. And then the people who actually want to go to work and do more just to make some more. universal basic income that Martin Luther King Jr. wanted in the 60s? Whoa, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Saying, that but Bernie say Sanders that. wanted. We hadn't, not reached, that. we hadn't reached the breaking that. point yet. I'm just saying if we get to if that breaking point. If we haven't reached the breaking point yet, I don't know what, we, what the breaking point is then. But not like um, just enjoy, unemployment guys, isn't that guys, high enjoy, right now. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Like, unemployment isn't that high. people aren't working. No. Everybody keeps saying that, but that's you because people are where people have become entrepreneurs. To your point, to, to that point, I, I, there is a part of me that just had to be kind of like fuck it. Yeah, but I, know yeah. I mean, there, there, there's a but part like, of me. Here's my thing. I, I used to be. Until you have you kids. Know, y'all know I deal with anxiety. <laughs> yes, I used to go from the fucking ozone lead, yeah. the nuclear war. Oh, yeah, it's always she, been some people shit. People in my hood, the check whole out, nine. Check out. Like, check I, out. I used to do the whole nine. I'm with y'all saying fuck it, but let's not act like this shit is okay. Let's not act like everything's going to be all right. It might not be all right, but fuck yeah. it. <laughs> People have been though, saying it, shit ain't going to be all right what for What is AI originally for, the though? Like, why do they have what that thing you just said? Chat GPT? Yeah, like, why do they have it originally? To, to, to help you. It's cool tech. Nutrition. That's what it is. That's just, it's all just cool tech. Yeah, I mean, it's like yeah. scientists that come this up with it. right here. I heard him. This I guy don't. right here, and you hate me. I didn't hear him. What did you say? This guy right here, and you What did you hate say? Me. I didn't even hear what he said. Okay, this just guy, run the tape yeah. down. This guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna start it. This yeah, guy. She can't run. These people, I'm not gonna start these it. These people are AI. I'm no, not you're gonna, a king. I'm not gonna start it. <laughs> they're, they're he chat, what he just said yo. under his breath. He gonna blame that on AI. You asking it? He gonna be like AI said that. I didn't even say shit. Okay, well I heard. I heard. This is crazy. Nothing. Nothing. What did I say? Nothing. Look. 
What did I say? I Tell me what I said. I mean, and the fact that you attack me, yo, so when I'm already defending you. Y'all. Hey, I, I what, what jokes you got for Charlemagne? Yeah. What did I say? Where are these jokes at? What, what yeah, jokes you spent all joke. fucking day on he, me? He this disarmed guy keep talking shit. He disarmed her by saying, I ain't going to joke on you no more. They're lying. You see? You see him? The thing is, though, with Charlemagne, if I hit blow the belt, he's conniving as fuck. And going what to try to oh, so really scared. down, yeah. So you scared of Scarlet no, 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 Charlemagne, but not scared, Andrew. But <laughs> so saying, I, gotta I be more know conniving. I. Wow. Wait, Charlemagne, <laughs> and no, I know you too. <laughs> just admit, okay. What you're just admitting is my jokes are better. That's all you're admitting. Wow. I'm not saying your jokes are better. I'm saying you're conniving. My as jokes fuck. are better. My pranks are better. Your what? My pranks. Wait, you're saying your jokes are better than Andrew? No, better than Taylor. I have good pranks. I'm my not a comedian, y'all. I have, no doubt. I have good pranks. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I did a good one yesterday. First of all, I have good pranks too. Can we do Ask an Idiot? Let's do Ask an Idiot. And you let them rile you up for no reason. No, I, I want to know what, I, no, I know you said <laughs> something. Good. So what you say? I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say nothing. You know what I have to go to? I have to go to his wife. Because she got up? all. Isn't that fucked up? No, he don't fuck with her. And like she got that. the power? Why is she supposed to? Yeah. Can we go do Ask an Idiot? Wait, what? His wife. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Can we do You're the yeah. only power. She really ought to just be lying and telling me she be believing that shit. She does believe. <laughs> sitting right here. She does believe. And then she. I told her this is going to happen last week. Throws her friends Andrew, under I'm, the bus. I'm not, <laughs> he throws you guys under the bus. No, I don't. You I just know y'all. There. I just know y'all. Y'all talk about I can't stop? <laughs> This guy can't stop. Y'all both can't this stop. Y'all both can't stop. Both stop. Stop, yeah. stop throwing him under the bus because I see you too. Stop. Mm, mm. Sneaky ass. She sees you she too. She sees yo. you, bro. Just because you got the skin doesn't mean shit, my nigga. <laughs> wow. Whoa. That was a jab. Oh. That was a jab. Oh. Wait, wait, she what does Shorty whiteness have to do with this? Wait, was that to me or something? No, to you. To you. Oh, stop. I thought you said skin. <laughs> I see your mouth trembling. <laughs> I see your mouth what? trembling. I'm just waiting. Go crazy. I'm waiting. <laughs> go. What is going on here, Taylor? <laughs> this guy? Yeah. He's playing with fire, You're bro. Playing Yo, with rest me. the He's playing with fire. No, 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 no. Give it up to God. <laughs> That's the way you get out of here. Press this guy pictures. is playing with That's fire. Bro, you know what we should have talked about? That, um, that Umar clip I sent you. The which greatest one? ever, Dr. Umar. Oh, he's the man. I saw two. It oh, you two. didn't see the one where Umar was talking about, like, how he feels about white people in the whole night. You didn't see that clip I said? I no, could put I that in the group chat. He just, he just was shouting at a basketball game, and he just went off. You didn't see that shit? Man, that shit was so good. Umar's so hilarious. What, 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 could, what could Umar possibly say about white people? That's, that's he was saying that he doesn't. Like I sent it to the group. He said he yeah, doesn't like. It to Taylor so she he can said he also doesn't like black people that have white friends. Damn. Damn. <laughs> he did not say that. Look, I'm gonna send it to you right now. He said. I mean, I, he, 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 he might mean that. <laughs> he said. Because <laughs> he, he said that. Alex just met Dr. He, he, he said a version of say, that to me. Did you just meet him? Yeah. Where? And I asked him. He was at my studio, and uh -huh. I asked him about coming on Brilliant, and he was like, "Oh yeah, that's the one with Charlotte." And I, that white boy would be talking crazy, and then he just shook his head. <laughs> and then somebody from Philly know he'd be talking crazy, <laughs> and then he just shook his head. That's it. Listen, this is a safe space for you, Doctor Umar. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I'm not inviting you on here to debate or anything. I just love your form of communication, and we would love to have you on as a guest. I'm not trying to give you pushback on any. We don't have to be friends. How about that? You and I do not have to be friends, but I would love you to sit in this seat right here and uh, and let's just talk, man. <laughs> Is that a message for him? <laughs> um, I sent it. It's in the... Um, I, I need a song producer and a beat. Black Queens Forever, Snow Bunnies Never. <laughs> what? Remember you trying to get that song made? Black Queens, here it is. Because white folks know how to make you think they good people. They laugh and smile and play with your kids and give you free food. And oh, my God. Whole conversations with you on the bus. White folks don't like you. White folks can't stand you. And they all racist. And they don't have to hate you to be racist. So you think they gotta hate you. They don't have to hate you. Racism is not about hate. Racism is about what? Power and control of the resources. That's it. They can have sex with you. They can give you your kids. They can marry you. But guess what they will never do? Give you control of the opportunities and the resources. All white people are racist. And until you understand that, you'll never be free. Because every black person has 10 good white people who you love and trust. 
And that's why I don't trust you. <laughs> See how easy that is? See, I love being Dr. Umar because I don't get into no gray areas with nobody because everybody knows what I stand for. She's white. I don't like it. Oh, my God. Why your six-year-old daughter got a permanent head? I don't like you. Why you still got a white Jesus on the wall? I don't like you. <laughs> so you already see me coming. I ain't got to have no debates. No arguments. And when I get around white folks and when I got to put my suit on to go to work, I always put a radical black button on my lapel. So the white girls don't think I want them. <laughs> because you Negroes love these white girls so much they think every black man wants their little nasty man they self. Oh my God. I'm getting on the elevator and all the white girls looking back to see if I'm looking at their behind. But you don't have any behind. <laughs> so I'm looking for Sally. I mean, the goat. <laughs> All I heard was the goat, bro. The goat. I ain't hear nothing but bad. Or that sheep. Who that? The goat. Whatever the fuck goats make. Funny. I, wa I must have watched that video 150 times. Who hurt him? He's the though. goat. Say White what? people. Cause Cause no, I'm trying to. Like, did he ever? Did he, because no, like, did he ever tell about his childhood? Like, why does he have so much hate? Like, I've never, never heard of that. What? to happen to you. Salute to Dr. Umar. Salute to Dr. Umar. I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, nah, he, so, uh, you know. Can we do some asking idiots? <laughs> I think I, I did a little research into his earlier years. He was adopted by white people. He, his parents are actually white. <laughs> That's bullshit. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, he was fostered. He was fostered in a white, in a white home. That would be the funniest this origin story. Right? He, he's, just, true. he's going to come back at he you. He was fostered in a white home. That's AI. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alexander of Bills 23 says, if y'all could switch lives for a day, would you? And what's the first thing you're doing as each other? I don't you see already know. one question except for the third comment, bro. See, I knew I shouldn't have came Damn. on this bitch. Look at that. <laughs> Van Mitch Matiana said, Van Thicker than Charlotte. That ain't no question. <laughs> There's no question mark Wait at the minute, end of are that. you thicker? Hold on. There's no question mark at the end of that. <laughs> that was a statement. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Matiana said, man, thicker than but Charlotte. I don't, know, I don't know if you're thicker. I don't think I, I think I'm bigger. You're bigger, but I think Charlotte might be thicker. You got thick. Yeah, yeah you're thick, Charlotte. This, the uh, Amaraj question is crazy, too. Is what being is invited to the cookout. Is, is Andrew invited to the oh, cookout? Oh, shit, my bad. Fucking wild raccoon. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but is Van invited to the cookout? Yeah. Mm. yeah it's my cookout. It depends on how much we got. That's the thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. If it's a light week, you know what I mean? If you just got, if you just got laid off. I'll be back on the Brilliant Idiots <laughs> in 2029. <laughs> DJ Dar said, why is America so fascinated with celebrity? I, that is a great question. I think because at this point... We don't have royalty, man. We don't, I don't think, was I think built that's on all celebrity. we got. What else do we have to be fascinated with? Yeah. America was built on celebrity. The guys who... Ooh. Like the, 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 the earliest stories of the guys in the American frontier. Ooh. Um, the, the founding fathers were the first celebrities. Ooh. Davy Thanks Crockett, so. Daniel Boone, all of these things. Famous stories where you, there's never been a time where America hasn't been. Billy the Kid, uh, the, these guys, Doc Holliday, some of the worst killers in the history of the country were romanticized in comic books and stories all over the place. America's I always been fascinated with celebrities. They're all Confederate soldiers. But I'm saying, were they celebrities in their time, or did they be? Absolutely. I don't know if they were all Confederate soldiers, but a lot of the uh, the uh, well, like the train robbers and bank robbers, oh, the and James the, brothers definitely were exactly in the yeah. West. They were these Confederate soldiers that now you know didn't want to be part of the fabric of this new society they were fighting against. But they had all the military training, they had the guns and weapons training, they had the cavalry training, they could ride the horses. So you basically trained up these people, and then they're like, all right, fuck it, we robbing everybody. Do we consider that famous though? They were, they were, they were, they were definitely infamous. famous. They were infamous, infamous. Yeah, but a lot of these guys like. Robert Ford killed Jesse James. He was one of the most famous men of his time. Fame has always been a part of the American. Because, yeah, we've romanticized our existence. Right. Because the story is incredibly romantic. I mean, like defeating the greatest army in the world with a bunch of people that, I mean, weren't even a functional army is, is insane. So after that, it's like everything is, is a romance. Story. I mean, it just almost feels like now you can't even have a conversation about anything that's happening in society if celebrities not attached to it. Like there's Everybody big else. societal issues that we don't even start discussion, discussing 
unless it, a, a celebrity is attached to it. It helps. It's fact. <sighs> Jesus Christ, that's fucking crazy. Uh, Jakes3 says, who in y'all opinion is actually the best rapper of the new generation by positive impact? Who a fucking positive cares, Positive impact, who yeah. Gives a yeah. Shit, Kodak Black. Go down. Scroll oh, down. Kodak is the man, dude. Damn. I ain't never said that. Damn, man. What? I don't what know. I, ain't no Van was here. We said Van was going to be here. I just did it like a week. Hold Shit. on. You said that Mexicans I can say the N word? I never said that. I don't know who they got me Scroll confused up. with. Who said this? Junie, G, J. J. Dilly 24. Dilly 24. Said, My boy Van, can Mexicans still say the N word? I ain't never said Mexicans but can, can they? say the N word. To, not to me. They have black blood, though. But not to me. To me, <laughs> they do. But, but but the mestizo period in Mexico, you had black slaves come over, they mixed yeah, with the indigenous yeah, population and white people, and they created Mexicans. But they're to, black. To 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 me, I, there's been a democrat democratization of the word nigga that exists. Cause like I know I'm from the south, and like where I'm from, when you, if you're not black and you say that word, there's a very specific intent. I get. I'm not from LA, I'm not from New York, I'm not from different places where different people throw it around. Yeah. So I'm not gonna tell nobody how to react in that, but to me, no. Who can say it that's not black and you feel the most comfortable? <laughs> nobody. <laughs> can, what about Fat Joe? Fat Joe says it. I, to, but to be honest with you, you know how I feel about that? Like that was regulatory capture. Like everybody went, it's okay, and so you just kinda, kinda have to deal with it. But it, am I cool with that? No. Oh, wow. but, it's, but it's not big enough. It's not a big enough deal to like make a big enough deal about it. But I, I, if somebody grew up somewhere else and they're like, "Hey, everybody in my neighborhood uh, says this, and this is the way we talk," what I'm about to pick a fight with you now after years and years and years because this is the way it is. But to me, there's a clear line there, and that line shouldn't be crossed. And I would have. I would, but he's I would, Puerto Rican. He he probably got black blood in him. He doesn't. I'm, re I re I'm reading this book right now. I, oh, I really? thought so too. I, I always thought that he was uh, Afro Latino. Latino, and that's what, another thing. What is he? But he describes. He talks. He literally talks about why he uses the N word, and he talks about all the backlash he gets for it now. But it's literally because he just grew up in the Bronx with black and brown people, and that's just the way they used to talk. He said when he came home, he said he can remember being like a little kid and and somebody saying. Yo, this little nigga got curly hair or something crazy like that. And he was like, that's just the language that they always used to use in the Bronx. So it's black people's fault. I mean, I mean, that's what they say. Yeah, that's what he yeah. said. That's the, but it, he said, but everybody used to use the word. And so he said, he, he said, that's why it, it, it you know, it, it took, took him back on. when he got older and people started giving him backlash for it. Because he was like, yo, that's just how I grew up. That was our culture. His <laughs> book, is, his book, by the way, Fat Joe's book, The Book of Jose, amazing fucking mm. read. I mean, highly entertaining. But boy, either Puerto Ricans are the greatest storytellers of all time, or, or some of this stuff is just unbelievable. What's the most unbelievable part? I don't want to give the book away. There's one part in the book where he talks about this kid from Ecuador, mm. an Ecuadorian kid, who literally tried to kill him every day for like four days straight with a Mac 11. <laughs> with a Mac 11. Yeah. Shooting at him with a Mac 11. So he talks about how he was in a rental car and the guy just shot up the rental car, and the car looked like Swiss cheese, and everybody was yelling, oh, Fat Joe, and I think he was with his, his man Tone, Fat Joe and Tone are dead, Fat Joe and Tone are dead. He was like, bullets never touched me. <laughs> that, just, that sounds believable to y'all? Somebody shoot at you for four days straight with a Mac 11? I don't know, some New York shit? It's Ecuadorian, I'm trying to, I have heard of that particular story <laughs> from him before. Yeah, Great but, book, yeah. phenomenal read. I actually want to talk to him about it, but uh, phenomenal read. It's just got some really, did this really happen? Yeah. Stories in there. Well then ask him, I want to know. Uh, Mark, Mark 19 says, Drew, how does it feel to be the minority at the pod when you gentrify it, bro? Know your worth, King. Thank you. <laughs> Um, honestly, I don't, I don't see color, um, <laughs> uh, but I smell it. These guys smell delicious. Uh, that barbecue. No. Uh, what, I don't know. I don't, uh, yeah, it's the best being a minority, you know? <laughs> I used to, I used to tease one of my homeboys with that. I used to have, I used to, uh, remember, uh, uh, three Six Mafia, Two Way Freak. What do you say? You remember Two Way Freak? He's a Two Way Freak. freak a two -way, two way Freak. I used to go, you got the fat man smell, the fat <laughs> man smell, you can't see your dick, and your health is not well. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a menace. I know. And you come at me, yo. 
Damn, Damn, man. I was, Damn, I, was evil. I was evil. How is he that guy today? <laughs> He's no longer with us. I'm about Damn. to say he did. Oh my God. You're lying. Oh, really? <laughs> oh <damn. laughs> Yeah. Oh, he's fine. Uh, oh, this is a good one. We can end on this one. All right. Bayes Tensai says, how have, you guys, how have you guys helped each other grow and evolve over the past 10 That's years question. in business and life? Mm. Hmm. I mean, definitely business-wise, I think I've learned so much from you just about like, entertaining, speaking on a podcast or radio. I mean, how to conduct yourself in these interviews. I remember I saw the, the coolest thing you did. We were doing the red carpet back in our MTV days. And every time I'd get interviewed by someone, I was like, all right, I got to think of something funny with this, that, the other. And we did it together once. And you had like bits ready to go. And it didn't matter what they asked you, you were getting to your bit. And the bit was fucking polished and like funny and it was the perfect hot take and the perfect line. And you saw them get it, laugh, and it was almost like print, we can put this out, whatever. And I realized in that moment, I was like, oh shit, like you have to treat these moments like you're treating stand-up. Like have your shit ready to go. You know what they're gonna ask you. You know they're coming, who do you think is gonna win the best rap award? You had a fucking line for everything. And I saw the kind of, the preparation that went into that and I was like, oh, wow, this guy's operating on a different level. This is, he is not winging though. it. Because, I mean, I'm do, I do radio every morning. But that's uh, a lot of the stuff they're asking is stuff that we've talked about a million times. But still, it's like, I, I need to see somebody do that to realize that that's how you operate in those spaces, mm -hmm. you know? And, like, that's just one example of many times I've seen you do things that I'm like, oh, wow, that is the way... Yeah, that is the way you handle those moments in those environments. Andrew helped me in life just because he was one of the people that I saw in this business who was actually faithful to their woman. <sighs> That's real. Straight up. Like lit, like lit, like early. I'd be like, dang, this guy's really faithful. It was so funny. You didn't believe it. <laughs> and the way that you would phrase it was that. But, damn, this guy's really faithful. No, for real. Like, like really. <laughs> and I mean, that was that was inspiring to see. Cause it was just like, oh, you you don't have to be out here. Wilding. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know? And I mean, I'm sure it's tough to go back to the room or, you know, not be out of time with your girl and like go do the right thing, but that shit ain't the easiest thing, especially when we was younger. Mm. Mm. So that 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 definitely helped me. Yo, yeah. this is where my podcasting career started. Oh wow. Yeah. So the first podcast, not the first podcast I was ever on, but the first actual podcast that people, a lot of people listened to that I was on was y'all. And then I did, remember we did the podcast? We were in LA, and the first yeah, time I was ever on station. was at the radio station. Oh my God, that's and then, right. I remember then that. after that, uh, like, people were like, oh, we might have a little podcast van. You hooked me up with Chris. Then that's how Red Pill Red started. Pill. Red, we didn't start mm, Wow, it. that phrase has changed. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't start it right away because TNZ wouldn't let us, but then we started it, and now, this is kind of like what I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Isn't that crazy? It's been it's been a while, but I've learned like I've learned a lot uh just through watching you guys. I've learned to really to be honest with you, one thing that I learned from watching y'all is just just to be me. You know what yeah. I mean? Just cause everybody's unique perspective and what they bring to the table, you know, has worth and value. I watch you guys be unapologetically you, so that you know I'm unapologetically me. Yeah, I mean I talked to both of y'all. That's shit more than probably anybody. I mean, not, not more than anybody, but more than most people in my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's impossible for us not to learn from each other and to grow. That's the nice thing about podcasting, though, is that like it's hard to be a fake version of yourself for two hours. Yeah, you can't. You yeah, you can you can hide some for like mastered it. Yeah, you think? Yeah, some people have definitely mm -hmm. really and even doing what we do, where you're like constantly no, 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 riffing. No, 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 like... no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm just saying it's a performative motherfuckers out there. Who, who, who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Not it's just a lot of yeah. performative people out there. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is a lot of times that like this this exposes who you are, and which is good for people who like being who they are because now you get we have an advantage, right? It's like. If you're pretending and someone gives you the script and you're just asking a couple questions and it's done. But if you're just riffing and talking for two hours, that you is going to come out. That's yeah. right. So, Alex, you got anything? Taylor, scroll down some more? I said I was going to end on that. Yeah, I would say probably everything 
because I wasn't of the industry at all. So picking up so much game from both of y'all, I, everything I do is like, I, I see him doing this. I see you doing this. I'm like, okay, this, that's the move that I'm going to do. And so, yeah, everything I do. Yeah. Oh, man, this is that's for you. Fine. You can end with this one. Oh, God. <laughs> no, this is good because this is a good, this is actually, it's informative. Alba Costa says, what's with the popularity of Ozempic for weight loss? Mm -hmm. I just want to know which one of y'all went in there and changed y'all name to whatever that is and asked that question. Um, <laughs> but you know, what, you know what it is, though? So for me, you know, I'm working out, I'm doing all this stuff, I'm going hard. And if I'm being real, all the way real, like, no holds bar. I literally hit a point in my life to where I was just at a roadblock. You know what I mean? Like it, I was so in a control. Rocky roadblock. Yeah, <laughs> I was. So <laughs> you like that one, Chris? You like that one? You like that shit, huh, Chris? Like, like, I hope you're in the wide. Like, like, he like, he like, said roadblock, and literally Charlemagne and my eyes just went like. This. <laughs> it was we like a say, drop of blood in the water. <laughs> and two great white stars. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm not saying it now. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. So, you know, it was, it was a rough couple of years, and, like, there was... And I had my life... When you hit the roadblock, did you blast straight through it? I went straight through it. Shut yeah. the fuck up. So, so I, I... You know, in my, in my... Before, I was... Everything about me was controlling my body, controlling my mind. Yeah. I had everything to weigh down at the age. Yeah. Just make sure that I didn't uh, gain weight again. Yeah. And then, grief hit dominates your life in that way. Yeah, right? yeah. Grief hit and like I just lost it and this and the, the grief dominates your life now. The grief is is all about taking getting the grief out. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then like you're up all night thinking and you're having dreams like every single night you go to bed you dream I couldn't sleep and the doctor goes here, take this. This will help you sleep. And it and he didn't take you know shout out to my psychologist we talked about it didn't say that like a side effect was that. You were gonna oh, gain weight. Oh shit! Oh so, fuck! Yeah, and so so it's, it's a drug called Remeron, and it's a fantastic drug to get you out of your depression. But if you want to go to sleep. yeah, but literally, I gained like thirty or forty five pounds. Even if you work out, it still causes it you. Just, gain weight? It just it you you're it's it's fucking with you, and it's making your appetite go crazy. So even after I got off of it, I just couldn't get back to that thing because I still felt bad. I go to a party one day, see a friend of mine. I'm like, man, you look great. He's like. I saw two guys actually. He's like, man, like this is kind of something that helps you. Mm. And what it really does is it makes you stop prioritizing food for everything because mm. it fucks with your appetite. So now, if I'm feeling, for me, it's been kind of good, and not everybody can afford it and stuff. But if I'm feeling like bad about something, I don't immediately think, let me go eat something because the drug is slowing down. I believe your digestion is yeah. that what it is? Slowing down your digestion and it's regulating your insulin. So. Now I have to think about like, you know, what back like I was before, like what makes me happy, which is playing basketball, like, which is boxing. So instead of constantly thinking every single day, what am I gonna eat? How can I not do this? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, I remember yeah. it's it's a funny thing to realize that kind you have a relief to be able to do absolutely. that. Absolutely. It's a funny thing to realize that like you back to the old you. Cause I thought that was gone. I remember uh I'm in the house and I ordered a butter cake from Mastros, and the butter cake comes and Kalika goes, I don't want any of that. And I was like, that's good, because this is for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I just housed the whole thing, and just physically I felt so bad. Um, and I just sat there, and I was like, I'm out of control again. And but it was just tough. But I'm telling you. They got a great butter cake, though. Mash up butter God, cake. It's bro. fucking unbelievable. It's so fucking fire, yeah. bro. Yeah, it's, it's like they taunting fat people. It is. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's, nah, you know they know are, it's, though. It's, it is it's, crazy. It's, it's like they no, the Mash up butter cake it's is so, crazy. But it's like a feeling that you can't replicate. Yeah. Bro, you not, you wouldn't have to murder the cake from Mash You know what I was mad about? I went to STKs. I was at, where was, where was I at STKs at recently? Oh, in Atlanta. What's that shit we used to get from SDKs all the time? That fucking dessert? Oh, I can't remember. I know what you're talking about, that though. That shit was so goddamn good. Yeah. It was a cookie or something? Like a cookie, yeah. The oh, whole... oh, in the uh, skillet. Yes, It's man. like a cookie in a skillet, oh. and you put like a scoop of ice cream on top of the cookie. Yeah, it's but insane. But we, we ordered a couple more of them bitches that time we was in, was out there. Anyway, but you know, for me... <laughs> The drug. <laughs> you really remember that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I like to eat. No, I know it's not on the menu no more because Van told me. <laughs> but he, he gets she the alert. He told me. He got the alert. They go right there. All, all the shit called one day like, "Yo, no, man, but you know, you know what's not on the menu?" <laughs> but, but, hey, but you know, hey, but you know, but you know what else is cool though? You know what's cool Depression. with me? It's like what I realized is that I am different 
mentally than I used to be hmm. because it doesn't bother me anymore. I, it used to be a situation. Well, thing going on the menu? No, shut up, nigga. That, that, the, like the jokes about it. <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh. I am oh like yeah, because it's not controlling your life. It, it, yes. it's not controlling when it's controlling my your life. life, you're that much more sensitive. Right. And but I'm, when you're not, it's not controlling your life. It can kind of wash over you. I have a great job. I yeah. have a great woman. Yeah, I yeah. Have, I'm like I'm in control. Like yeah. before, when I was big, I used to think the reasons why I am not all these what things I is because want, this. Because yeah. I'm fat. Mm. Wow. And so it just it it. My mentality now, I just think about it, and really what I think about is like the responsibility I have to myself and to my body. Yeah. And the fact that like losing dad, losing my Uncle David this year, losing my Uncle Charles, none of these guys hit 70. Mm, so now you gotta get on it. Yep. None of these guys hit 70. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I hope that was funny to you too, Chris. Why you over there laughing and shit? It's <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy. Me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> both of them. Yeah, both. <laughs> so, so you said that what, both man? of them for some reason they just started smirking. They trying like, to. What? They trying to. They don't want to because they don't want to step on the, the sitcom moment. Yeah. But I know they want to. Son, I don't like. I, I know they want to. Look at both of them. They they they, 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 they no, both started no, smirking. Don't, 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 I'm no, telling no, you, bro. No, like no, no, no. who smirks when you hear about that? <laughs> 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 Yeah, you no. see, you see, it was just one thing. It was just, you don't have an Uncle Charles, do you? I do have an Uncle Charles. He oh. passed away. Oh, a couple years ago. Why? That from Bone Thugs. No, oh, yes. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he put some sauce on that. I, I know about Pop Charles. Fat Joe, the other Fat Joe is in the room. Rest in peace, Charles Stewart and Uncle Charles. Oh my God. Bum, 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 Listen, bum, man. Bum, uh, make sure you go check out. I did a conversation with Judy Bloom, man. That's available uh, oh, that's online right now. Yo, she shouted you out on uh, Andy Cohen. On oh, Andy Cohen's show yeah, too. That was cool. Judy, a couple times, man. I feel like when you ever you get the opportunity to go hang out with icons and legends, you should, you know, go take that opportunity. So I definitely did that a couple of times. And I would do it again, God willing. And uh, salute to Gillian Wallow, man. You know, we did a million dollars worth of game a couple weeks ago, me and Envy, man. So salute to them, go check that out. Shout out to Gillian Wallow, man. <laughs> yeah, That's fucking Gillian great. Wallow, man. Gillian Wallow doing their thing. You know, you should, you, if you can't celebrate Gillian Wallow, something wrong with you. Nah, dude, they're, they're fantastic. Something wrong with you. Also, Gilly can hoop, kind of. Bro, Gilly a good athlete, bro. Bro, now, like Gilly's a good athlete, and also, man, Wallow was in prison for twenty years. Think about that. Twenty? Yeah. Yes. Oh, should I? Wallow did twenty wow. years in prison. He hasn't been home six years, yeah. and he's home. And now these dudes now, are the, the highest paid are kiss, black, kill black podcasters. It. It. How do you not it. celebrate that? Up M's. Salute to yeah. Gilly and Wallow, and it's not just about the money. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's the fact that they 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 figured something out. Chemistry that undeniable. Chemistry undeniable. Yeah. A lot of people come home from prison and they just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Wallow figured it out. Yeah. He figured it out in a way that both of them have generational wealth for their families now. Yeah, it's incredible. Salute to Gillian Wallow, man. Yeah, man. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Van, thank you for coming. No problem, my brother. <clears throat>